was this in news in GTA? They're currently talking about uh, Brexit and stuff in the Congress right now. It's, there's a lot of risk. So risky. I mean, I'm look. I was looking at the 30 minute, and I was looking at to see that it can come down to fill this wick right over here. But you know, you got this where the 30 minute candle is reversed, so you know it came down till this point too. So it kind of gets a little risky. I'm probably gonna stay away. Plus, not enough range now. I mean, 10, 11 pips. Then you got the support. You know, so you have to wait for price. I mean, I'm just gonna wait for price. I'll wait for it to develop further. I think I would need a break above, let's say, 131. 320 or break below 130 yeah 950 because there's a clean candle that went up with the news right so i have to wait and see morning roger that's the yeah very massive this morning yeah man gold gold broke 1510 last night just reversed so hard. Yeah, it came back. Tapped into 15. Were you going so early in the morning? What's this? Yan. USD JPY one hour. Break above. And then head over to this area here to the left. What's this? 107,700? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you got to mark that, sir. Sorry, it's all there next time. Yeah, no, it looks good, man. It looks really good. I want to open it short, but I'm not too sure there is too much momentum to the upside. And I'm, I hate, I hate trading into the, against the trend. Yeah. They must be EJ. That's exactly the same. Yeah, EJ is the same as UJ. They both have resistances. If this resistance breaks even on UJ, then I think gold's gonna. I mean, gold's in a very big range too. Big, 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 big area. Oof, look at that. Resistance on UJ. We have resistance at 107, 400. A break above this area, yeah, we're going straight up to 107,700, yeah, you're right. How big is this? This is, oh, 26 pip range. Not no. bad. Then obviously, if, like, let's say if it starts to reject it and kind of start to go bearish, then it's coming down to, again, this area here. 107,200, 210. Or even lower a little bit if it starts to continue bearish. Someone said my app is broken. I can't see the zoom code. Oh, because I never posted it. <laughs> I'll, I'll post it right now. this oh GJ uh, took entries based on 15 minute break and wick fill first entry was not a good entry <coughs> but the second entry was take profit was not able to secure profit when it gave me the chance since it did not hit my TP it tagged me out above the 15 minute candle when I moved my stop down oh. yeah I think your idea was right your idea was correct correct idea but also like when I look at these wicks, when candle comes down here and taps and reject it, I look at that as like, okay, that was probably the potential move. That's what I look at as. When was this? I think 131.050 has to break on uh, GJ before we see any more bearish momentum. 131 what? Uh, 05. 131.05. Yeah, yeah. I was mostly looking at, I was looking at a break below one, one thirty one. Because this is where, like, I'm looking at where the one hour candles turned. 
So one was this yesterday, and then again before that. So I'm looking at this two ranges where GJ is in. Um, one range is right here, this one, and the other range is somewhat over here. Yeah, I see that as well. But the 131.05 area has held pretty strong for the last one, two, three touches. Mm. And it requires high, like, high volume candles to break through. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Now that you mentioned it, now I'm looking at it from a... It's a 15 minute. So if that breaks down, it's like the full breakdown of support at 131.05. Yeah, I would like a break below 130, 131 even. Yeah, you're looking at 25 pips of the downside, so either way, like 5 pips is not matter too much. Yeah. Like that would be a safe, a safe bet. Yeah, once it closes below 131 and comes into this area here that will give me more confirmation okay now we're trying to head down because 131050 you're right like that's been rejected but then you have this wick here too that went all the way through 131050 but then it went back up so my only fear is that what if a candle breaks below 131050 and does the same tap as this candle here and moves up yeah Right, because now when I look at the price, this is a 131, like it's a psychological level too, like the strong price, you know. So if the previous 30 minute candle has come down and rejected it, so it's kind of like a big deal. Yep. So I'm probably going to wait to see. Yeah, 131 makes a little bit more sense with, when you explain it with that candle as well. Yeah. yeah. seems a bit safer. Yep. You just starting to make move here. Let's see what the uh, secret indicator is saying. Ooh, weak yen. <laughs> Weak yen, strong dollar. You were all up early this morning, weren't you? Excuse me? You were all up early this morning, Good morning, good morning, good morning. Yeah. All the pairs, what? What's up, coach? Hey, hey. Coach, go check out that GCAT. 3 a.m. Should have helped or whatever. Oh, yeah, it probably spiked up a lot. Yep. Form support. I bought it and look where it went. Wow. Ooh, tapped right in that gray zone. I think I had this gray zone drawn from last week. You did, you did, I remember that. Yeah. Um, do you still use the hot lava indicator? Yes. The hot lava indicator. The pound is weak today. That's the whole deal. But the pound is... I don't know what this... Was this something that they made a decision? Or was this someone said something? That's what I want to find out. Euro group meetings all day. Yeah, I'd want to stay away from Euro. Euro and GBP, man, that would be... Hey, what's mess. up, Raquel? Hey, how's it going, Simon? <coughs> good, good. So that spike on GBP this morning was uh, a rumor that the EU were going to make concessions on the Brexit deal. Oh, nice, Simon. Good job. But only a rumor. So hence why it's dropped straight back down. Oh, oh I, I think it's going to correct the whole move down. 
Yeah. I don't. There's no reason why it should be going up right now. Yeah. Yeah. So that I, was just a rumor. We'll probably get the fact later that it was a load of rubbish and it will die. Yeah, I agree with the cells. Oh, like from this point now. Nice liquidity grab, though. Yeah, like in the past, we've seen whenever a Brexit news happens where someone said something, it moves and then it corrects the entire move. Yeah. Free traffic, buy stop, perfect, that's good. The problem with the China news is like they are increasing their sales from the US so that means good trade that means strong dollar but the only problem is will Trump wake up next week and say no <laughs> more tariffs it wouldn't surprise me if he changes his view yeah I think he's going to change his mind like, this is all a show for the press can't see anything being done just yet. Yeah, I think it's a show for the press. Hey, look, we're good. We're doing trade. Everything's okay. And then yeah. Trump is gonna need some investment money. He's gonna load up on gold buys and he's gonna tweet. Yeah, end of the month. <laughs> yeah, end of the month. Yeah, it's bound to be. It's gonna <laughs> with Brexit stuff as well. That's all trade stuff as well. Oh, Mr. Maurice. is weak probably should start eyeing GJ cells over here one thirty one point two is a daily level if you scroll back uh, on the daily charts there's a large wick like all the way back <laughs> all the way left yeah yeah oh that doesn't really matter well if you look at it GJ was in a oh. huge huge buy and then it went all the way down. Oh, this one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. This was the flash crash. Yeah. You know, now that I'm looking at the daily candle, I'm kind of thinking that this daily candle might flip bearish. Kill this daily. Wickfield? Wick. Yeah, Wickfield. That is 60 pips. But now we need con 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 confirmations on the smaller time frames that it will continue to move down. So if we drop, drop down to the four hour, what I'm seeing on the four hour is that this was support on the four hour. This was the market open. Market opened with the gap at support, which left a wick here on last week, you know, Friday. So market opened with a gap. And then it retested that support, went up, and this broke down, and then this move went up, and this four hour candle kind of closed below this area. This current four hour is bearish below that area. So this makes me believe that if four hour comes down below 131, I think this whole move was from the Brexit news and technically speaking that this move up would have been a fake out and we should continue moving down. This is the daily wick for right over here around 13500. Is that the four hour on DJ? Yeah, that was the four hour. Rukil, you washing ditches? What? You're washing ditches? I wish I had my sink in front of my computer. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, somebody's cleaning dishes, bro. 
Mine uh, looks different than yours. Oh. I, uh, on the four hour, m my candle is still bullish. I have no. It has a Felix. Seat. Mute your microphone, bro. Oh, sorry, man. <laughs> yeah, it's and the chart, Gregory. Yeah, because mine has a huge week. The the move we did in the London session, and it's still bullish. So if it turns very. I see more to the downside. If your candle looks different, it might be because of the exchange on the exchange that you chose to show the chart on trading view. If you use Oanda, they use New York closes for the charts. Yeah, and I think it's because I use the MT5 platform, you know. It's, uh, mm. No, it's because of the. Platform for sure. It's because of the different liquidity provider. Yeah. yeah. If you're working on a London close versus a USA close, London close, four hour candles close on, on uh, four and eight o'clock. Uh, New York close close at five and nine. But I see the same thing you see with that huge grab up, and then now the four hour candle is still bullish. Yeah, yeah, I see the same. But I mean, it does look like it possibly could turn bearish, but that's a huge support at 131, yes. uh, 156. Yes, Ted keeps saying that. <laughs> yeah, look where. Uh, yeah, I'm wary of where it rejected on the daily yesterday as well. It's a big level. Anyone trading euro pairs or pound pairs, it's it's very difficult right now. Like any sort of thing just moves the market the, the other way. Yeah, so messy. Yeah. I had gold buys this morning. Um, luckily, my TP was 15.10, but I wasn't expecting that drop down. Yeah, I got snapped out too overnight. I had two gold cells on this morning. Yeah, I got ten pips so out of gold this morning too. This doesn't make sense to be going down unless this would just uh, move lower to push higher. Let's see. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And see, I'm not keen. It's because of the, the weekly wick as well. On the top, being so small, or what have you, so kind of we expect to have them. Just such, it's just such a range on the weekly though. Just yeah. needs to, we just needed to break and then we're good. Yep. Thousands this, of pips. This area needs to break. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, right now, four hour, we're just ranging like between pretty much 1500 and 1512. Yeah. <laughs> you see that, that's just it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a massive range, but yeah. <laughs> It is a big range, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it works, but it doesn't work because it'll just whipsaw at any given point. That's the problem. Like you said yesterday, it's got like two dollar moves and stuff. Yeah. Finding its own support again, and yeah, just kind of stepping up bit by bit, and then coming back. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good chart, whoever just sent that. I've got that marked up on mine. Yeah, I see. I see that now. This is a very nice chart. If you look on the one hour, yeah, it could be just doing a retest to continue lower. Yeah, this is. I've a... got my level a little bit higher. See where that wick is. Right here. No, no. So you see where you just marked your zone. Oh, this one right up. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd want it to come up with more fifteen oh four level, but yeah. yeah, same idea. But again, I, I don't really want to be selling gold. I want to be buying. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I think for the short term, selling would make sense because. I mean, there is news that China agreed to buy more stuff in the US, so that might bring gold down. But I think any move down is just liquidity for a big, big, big move up. Yeah, but they blocked the NBA. That's going to piss Trump off more, surely. Oh. So there's yeah. going to be some like NBA event in China today or tomorrow, and they <laughs> cancel it. <laughs> Yeah, the um, NBA, uh, well, it's because Houston 
Um, it, Houston basically said something. Uh, the Houston Rockets owner said something about China. Um, yeah, about China. the protesting, and then uh, the um, commissioner of the NBA was just like, "We're allowed to say whatever we want because of freedom of speech." Um, so I'm not reprimanding them. So then China turned around and said, "Well, you, you guys can't do any more NBA games here in China. Go back to uh, to US." So. It was a huge weird thing because the Raptors played yesterday. The Raptors played the Houston Rockets uh, in China, and they were supposed to do another game on Thursday. And supposedly now there's like a whole bunch of uh, <coughs> like hoopla around it that they might not do it. So yeah. Yeah, China said, "Well, you can say whatever you want in the U.S. We are communist bitches. You can't say anything here." Yeah, to Google what freedom of speech was. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, sorry, it was Japan, not China. Yeah, they said they said something. <laughs> they said something there about whatever, and it just pissed off the Japanese people or whatever. Yeah, but it's, it, I th yeah, I thought it was Japan because I was like, there's no way they're playing in China because all the protests, and the, the internal war going on there. Yeah. But he said something about the the protests in Hong Kong, and then the Japanese government was like, yeah, you guys can see you later. So yeah, I guess my kind of thought on this right now is if we get above like your level you've got there, 130, 130, then we can look for a wick fill. But wow, likewise, look at those! If we close below 131, then we can look for sales. But right now. I like it. Look at that one hour, man. <laughs> yeah. The four, the four hour I see on my MT five, MT five is just a big wick. Mm -hmm. Huge wick. Yeah, not nice. Not nice candles to trade those. Because you've effectively got two rejections to the top side and two rejections to the bottom, so <laughs> doesn't know where the hell it's going. Yeah. That's what the whole of the UK government that. Yeah, exactly. Not know where just they're going. No idea. Signifies what's going on in the UK right now. Yep. 100%. Did you see they're going to open on Saturday, especially in the government? They're going to open Parliament for Saturday to make decisions. Really? Yeah, that's the first thing since, I think I read it was since the Falklands War. First time they've ever done it. Just I guarantee they still won't make a decision. They'll just I argue. Know. I'm not sure. Do you think they might just do it over the weekend so it's just like a massive gap on the on the open? Yeah. No one can get it. <laughs> yeah, everyone's trading Forex. <laughs> like, that's, that's it. They'll do it like that on Yeah, we'll do everything and then that's it. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, these are just different liquidity providers. The best thing to do is to just Focus on your four hour chart because all the other smaller time frames are the same. That's right. It's just like Ted said, one's London close and one's New York close, right? So you get the candle different. So London close, Ted, you get a candle on a Sunday, right? Yes, we do. Yeah. Well, you, the, the, you yeah, the, one extra four hour candle. That's correct, yeah. I mean, it really doesn't change your outlook. I mean, if you're trading, um, the fact that like when I look at my four hour candle, it, it doesn't really bother me in terms of what's happening here. It's more of the sense of, you know, what, what the overall trend right now is with, with the daily and the daily right now still hasn't broken that support, that, that lower support. So, I mean, it's hard to trade GJ right now until we break that support at like 130, 200. Because if it does start to rocket up, um, you know, like it, it once again. I mean, the the bias hasn't flipped. Like that, that's sort of what it is. Um, you know, there was a whipsaw, but I mean, that doesn't mean anything, right? It's just it's people just playing in the market, the news. It's looking at the overall bias, and that that is, um, you know, that's what I'd work on. But I also don't want to trade GJ with all this mess, anyways. Well, every chart's a mess right now, actually, to tell you the truth. 
like I'm, I'm, I agree with uh, with Simon. I want gold buys, and we're getting sells right now. So like, there's a lot of crap that doesn't make sense. Oh, there was a China is open to partial U.S. trade deal. That's why it dropped. Yeah, that's what I was looking at earlier. Yeah. Is this the one you're looking at? Yeah. Oh, no, the other, other one. one. There's another one. Uh, the China has opened a partial trade deal. Uh, oh, that okay. One. okay yeah. And then I'm reading the Brexit. The EU is ready to make concessions. <laughs> the government party would clearly oppose. <laughs> <laughs> And they did it again. In one hour, they switched the rhetoric or the narrative. Wow, these guys just manipulate the market again. Did you see that? And then, uh, two and a half hours ago, the EU is ready to make concessions. And then an hour and a half ago, no, we oppose those concessions. <laughs> yeah, it's right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have those. And then we two hours the later. <laughs> I think they're still in the, they're still talking there. Yeah. that person who sent the chart on gold you might be right if the 30 minute breaks the low here you might see a little push down Sachs said buy the pound earlier this week. To me, that means sell the pound. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah. <laughs> I think if, if, if we're going to look at gold sells, I think the only thing that I'm looking at gold sells is if we break below 1497. Um, that the, that would be the only thing I'd be looking for, and then I'd go from 1497 to 1490, basically. Really? Uh, yeah. If we're looking at cells. Yeah, I agree. It's too dangerous to trade in this little range here because 1500 around that level is so strong. It's yeah, still a... I think you can get it, but like I said, I I just don't trust that that area. Like, <clears throat> I don't I don't trust this area. Because of all this, right? Because what's happened is we've rejected, we've we've rejected and then bounced up. So if we do that and then bounce, um, it does also create sort of, you know, your magical trend line as well. If you want to you know, have a good laugh with trend lines, um, that's my only concern. But it, it could work um, if the last hour was a fake out and this hour now is going to now continue to drop um, it does make sense and going with the theory that the daily candle stays in the same direction for the day um, I, I tend to agree that it could drop more it's just I, I, we're, it, this, if this daily candle drops this daily candle is dropping back to 1490 pretty much mm. 1492 because then what happens is on the daily you have three candles that have created consolidation so similar to what was happening yesterday on the 30 minute, you basically have your box and then what ends up happening is right now on the daily candles, you have, um, you have uh, this bullish candle in the middle and then you have a um, bearish candle beside it and then now you have this bearish candle doing this. So the idea would be then this bearish candle continues down and then, you know, we have this consolidation box that we're in. That's what I tend to believe. The problem is 1497 is like right over here. So there is a possibility that, you know, because we created this little tail here, that what ends up happening is this now starts to retreat a bit 
because this is a support level on the, on the daily and you can see massive rejections so that's that's sort of what I'm that's what I'm thinking in my head and that's what what I'm looking at that yeah we could probably go down to 1497 perhaps but if we actually wanted the further drop we would have to break 1497 because there's a hard there's a hard support there yeah, I think this will continue down. I got sell yeah. and gold. Yeah, I, I I think I think it will. Um, if like I said, if it continues down, it's continuing down through fourteen ninety seven down to fourteen ninety, uh, more than likely. But it's just I want to wait for that break first. So I mean, if you take sells now, you've got a good <clears throat> position probably to about here um, and then eventually down to here and then once this breaks then there's easy sells down there yeah the only thing I'm looking at is that this 30 minute it broke the low of the previous one yes creating a resistance here for a it's like a spaceship up down to fill this range well, you, well if you look on the 5 minutes and, five, and 15 minutes Raja price keeps rejecting from 15 or 2.7.8 it keeps and so I see the resistance already formed on the 15 minute and it keeps rejecting rejecting the, the price from 15 or 2.75 uh, I would I would I would look for a sell below 15 or 1 to break the nice Cheering for you, Raja. This is kind of what I got right now. Oh! <laughs> uh. uh oh. Hey, good morning. You got out. Morning. Good. Is it weird that I said yesterday I want 1492, 1495 for buys? Mm. Wow, it's not there yet. Well, if it doesn't go there, then I don't know. Like this, today is just, I don't know, it's just messed up. Toast. Yeah, we're just saying that makes sales doesn't make sense to me, but it's. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that drop this morning. I think it will rally later in the day. I don't know. That's just my thought process. If if we get above like 1504, 15 into 1505 zone, then I'll be looking for buyers. Yeah, sells and gold doesn't make sense for me too either. Like I would look for sales below 1501 because if it respect if it keeps rejecting the price, you know. Man. Or, you guys yeah. made gold go up with all that talk. Yeah. It was going yeah. down. <laughs> Man, I was up four pips and it just reversed. You guys started talking. My bad. Sorry. It was going good and then the candle literally flipped. Yeah. It's a trend line, man. It's a trend line. Yeah. It makes sense because the daily candle of gold is very bullish. And for it to actually go down, then honestly, that's just the markets are messed up to do that. It just there's so much bullish power right now it just doesn't make sense and then, i don't know if you guys follow like FTRs or whatnot if you look on the what was it the 15 minute all the way to the left at, uh, at around like 15 uh, 1580 there's a bearish candle right there that's like acting as a support so if we break that like below 1497 then we're good for some but uh, as of now I think it's just gonna head up. I don't like any of this at all right now. Yeah. Market no. sucks. Yeah, everything's all really messy. Yeah. Like truly, truly messy. Yeah. Like GJ just rejected off of 131, 150, and now it's heading up. Like this yeah, doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Oh well. I'm gonna sit with my hands on my ass. Yes. Oh, time to um, maybe update my audio library here. Incredible, man. 
thought it was an AG again, actually. I just, I, you know, literally EG is beside my GJ chart, and I flipped through EG before I flipped through GJ, because EG gives me sort of the, the pulse. Yeah. And uh, I saw that it, it whipsawed bullish now on the daily, but then there's a, oh. heavy, there's a heavy resistance at 0 0.90. So I'm like, yeah. well, there, there's nothing to trade there either. Like, no, there's not. That's the one I've been watching. Um, yeah. I put a, a fair chunk of sales the other day. Was, uh, bars the other day was the noise, but... Yeah, it seems like the, the weekly candle filled that whole range from uh, 0.89 to 0.90, but then now it hit a major resistance level. I think the good thing is if it, if, if it, if it did break it, you have like a huge range from 0.90 to 0.92. Oh. Yeah, big time. <coughs> some songs here now no one has to listen to the same music I miss I miss pre YouTube music yeah me too well I look at goal now it just reversed <laughs> the last minute man, I miss the I miss the birds the most yeah I miss the birds man <laughs> Man, I love that you, like, Forex family has a lot of, like, good gold traders, but I'm also glad I don't trade gold, gold because, man, it, it just, from the looks of things from around people, like, it just, like, messes with a lot of people. I'm glad. It's a tough one. But once it starts moving, it's pretty simple. Yeah, once you get a nice trend, it, it, it's good. It's just yeah. right now, it, the way that the structure is, I don't, it's not strong. No. Yes, everybody tells me, and I have noticed that when it's, it respects stru structure a lot, like when it's, it's... Yeah, it trends really well um, when, when it does trend. That's that's the problem, like, and this is, this and this, and it hurts people because people are stubborn and they'll try and call tops and bottoms on gold, and it's like, don't do that. Like, you're just going to hurt yourself. Yeah, keep it in there. <laughs> when I first started and I started trading gold, I called... I tried calling a lot of tops and it burnt me a lot. Yeah. I decided not to trade it. Especially if that's the last three months. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Yeah, yeah I, I don't really trust. Like, you can see gold right now is ranging on the 15 minute. It's just, it's really nasty. Yeah. It's becomes a copy. about the daily candle on gold is you know if you miss today's move mm. and, and it drops to like say say it just hangs around here it goes from like 1503 to like 1497 yep. the, the good thing is because you have that bearish momentum off of today's daily candle the tomorrow's daily candle should go bearish and we should go to 1490 yep. um, that's, uh, I mean, that that's sort of what I would look at. And that's sort of what I'm thinking in my head right now is if we don't get a good position to sell off gold right now, then potentially tomorrow it could sell off. Um, the only thing that I would watch would be how the daily forms. If the daily starts to pull down right at Asian, then I'd be more likely to buy gold than I would sell it because essentially we're creating a bottom wick. But if the daily opens bullish and we go, say, to 1503 as an example, um, then more than likely um, it will drop down at that point. Yeah. 
Um, why do you guys don't suggest gold or any metals to newbies? Because they move too fast. And tops means the highest point in the chart. People, um, people try and call like the fact that once it hits a resistance level, that that means that the candles that the price is going to reverse or hits a support level, price is going to reverse. That's not how to trade. You have to evaluate your price at support or resistance. It doesn't mean that just because it hits that price that it's now going to reverse. It just means that you should be paying attention at that price level. Thirty minute closes bearish on gold. Can we expect fourteen ninety four? Um, I think that's going to be very difficult to achieve. That's a major. That's below major support. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, it's hard. Like you got to break fourteen ninety eight first. I think if we pull up to 1504 and we see some rejection there, we might, might be able to catch a short on it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we might get a pull up for this hour candle and then the next hour just plummets down. I have a feeling that, you know, the way this candle is rejecting 1502, like your 1503, you might find that it'll pull back, it'll pull down a bit afterwards. Yeah, that yesterday like a pull on like That's right. Sorry. It's kind of on uh, what time do can daily candles form? They form according to session times. So the 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 Asian session is the first session of the day for forex. So that would be when the daily candle starts. So when Asia wakes up, that's when the daily candle starts. The best way to do it is to go to the daily candle and see what the time is well you can't see it on the daily candle <laughs> you can see it in the four hour see what the time is and then look when it starts and look at the clock on your wall and yep. just, just just for me like right now like on my little board i have my little forex board on my house i i write down the start time of every four hour candle just so i have it you know like Yeah, but you should, basics, you should know how many four hour candles make up a daily candle, how many one hours, how many 15 minutes, like, if you're trading those time frames, that's stuff you should know. Oh man, you, you know what's funny, you, you said that, and I have so many people asking me those questions, it's crazy. Yeah, like a lot of people just still don't understand that concept. God, you gotta understand how candles... <laughs> Oh, G just pushing. Yeah, G just pushing over here. Watch All right. it. So. <laughs> just want to trap everybody again. Yeah. Yeah, I don't trust. I still don't trust pilots. <laughs> just seen another news report about um, basically the president of Ireland has just come out literally three minutes ago and said no change to the EU position on Brexit. Yeah. So I was just looking at exactly that. Yeah. So that to me is still, you know, negative unless they're just pricing this in. I don't know. I'm staying away at the moment. Yeah, it's too much speculation. No, it's just... Like yeah, Raquel, like Raquel, you're looking at that one hour. I'd want that one hour count to close something like that to be interested in maybe taking a buy off the new one hour. But yeah. Yeah, mate. See how it closes. Gold is pushing down. Nice. Yo, can't in the middle of nowhere. Come on, gold. Yeah. There you go. Breaks fifteen. Oh. Yeah. Still in, Raquel. Yeah, I re-entered when it pushed up. Okay, nice. Nice. 
what were you? What did you say you were going to do? Are you aiming to fill that whip badge, or what were you aiming down to design? Uh, I just closed on letting one run. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it came into this area, mm -hmm. so I want to be safe. Because if it now pushes down, yep. perfect. Yeah. It needs to break that area first, right? Yeah. Yes. Because we're starting, if you look on the one hour, this is like starting to create support here. Yeah, that's what I, was just, I was just looking at the 30, and yeah, same. Top. Yeah, the previous two, my previous two one hour candles have closed like here. Yeah, exactly the same. Yeah, that's, yeah. Oh, nice. Push. <coughs> I've got 10, so 12 here. pips. Hey. Nice trade, bro. Um, but um, it seems like you didn't wait for the time to close, though. No, because the 15 minute once this closed bearish, I entered. Because um, cause the reason I closed my first sells was when the 15 minute went up. So I was like, ah, oh, shit. So I closed. And then it closed bearish, and then I re entered with the same stop. Oh, okay. So you dropped down to a lower time frame to get a better entry. Yeah. No, it's, it's like I went to a smaller time frame to see confirmations because. As I said, it was moving up, so I closed, right? But that was the 15 minute moving up. But once it closed bearish, then that gave me more confidence that, okay, now there's a higher chance for it to continue moving down. Because my original bias was actually like sells. Yeah, nice trade, nice trade. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I think most of my confidence with this sell came from someone posted a chart on gold earlier. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. I wanted it to go higher though. Was your, was your stop loss on the first position, Raja? Where was your first stop loss? It, it was around 1502.91. It wasn't above 50 minute candle, right? Yeah, it was right here. Right above here. Yeah, so. Yeah. Not bad, not bad. I really fucked up last night in Asian session though. Oh yeah? I almost fell into that well of disaster on gold <laughs> but then then I just closed my charts and I went no fuck it like I took two losses and I was like I'm gonna take another trade and then yeah. I, I was like no 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 no, no. <laughs> yeah who's listening to a speech oh this is playing in in my thing over here where the fuck did this come from? Yeah, that was a that's a good trade there. I usually give my trades two chances. Trump post anything about a partial trade deal today. China said they're open to it. He says he's not. <laughs> <laughs> that does not surprise me. <laughs> well, he said earlier he wants a complete deal with China. So a partial deal from China really doesn't help too much. <laughs> I was reading about that, and that, that's potentially something that will happen next year. Not the full deal. Yeah. There's lots of deals. Maybe. <laughs> hmm. It looks 
look who's uh, look who's trying to make a deal with each other. Hey, you got Trump over here. The guy wakes up angry and moves the markets. <laughs> the pound will be really hard to trade today. The 30 minute, one hour tried to go up. Now it's coming back down. And if guys are still in gold cells, I put my stops at break even. I close everything, by the way. Look at two hour chart. Sorry, I don't look at two hour charts. <laughs> I've never looked at a two hour chart. What is break even? And how do you place it on MT4? <laughs> break even is when you put your stop loss at your entry so that when price reverses, it doesn't take you in negative. That's what break even is. Now I think might be the U-turn point of gold. See, like bringing that thinking that this is the U-turn of gold, the U-turn of any pair, it's going to get you nowhere. You know, when you see candles are going bearish, there's a higher chance candles will go bearish. A U-turn will come when you have a candle flipping in your direction. And then you can say, okay, now we're going the U-turn. What's the usual? Ah. Yeah. 15 minute close on GJ. <laughs> Bastard. Mm, I kind of want to sell this now, GJ. Yo, Rakil. Hey, what's on? What's going on, guys? That, uh, that push up on DJ looks like a fake out. Oh no, it moved back up. Oh shit. Is that resistance or not? I think, uh, I think GJ is at resistance right now. If this 30 minute candle close is bearish, I'll probably take sales. Yeah, if someone was to ask me what goals going to do now, I think this 30 minutes good is just going to wake up and then there's a higher chance it can continue moving down. Yeah, GJ could be a decent sell. 131.3 got rejected multiple times recently, and each time it's been rejected, it's had a pretty decent push off. You got 15 pips or so to the downside before you get any kind of resistance. To be honest, I would stay away from GJ while it's in this range here. This is a very, very tricky area. I would want to take a trade on GJ somewhere over here or if it breaks up to this side, but not inside here, right? Because you got candles moving down and then candles moving up and down, throwing wicks over here, tried to break up, came down. So this, this, is, this is an area where you're in the forest and the bushes have thorns. You can't, yeah, you can't move around here. It's just so hard, it's so tricky. 
Oh, I just do one. Plan. Yeah. So you got to come to this area here where you have flat land and you know you can run freely down. Nice field. Yeah. But here, if you start running, you get a wolf. It attacks you and takes you out. Then you start going the other way, and there's a some other thing attacks you, and you get stopped out. And it's just a, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's just a total mess. Like gold, gold was easy. Gold was easy. Like the thirty minute candle made a low. Alex, it's the same thing we talked about, like in the boot camp. Made a low, came up, created a resistance, and boom, down. That was the trade. GJ, it's just so. I mean, it's. I just have no words for it. Gold also had good thirty minute resistance. Or sorry, thirty minute momentum as well. Yeah. Hey, Gold good morning. Going right back up. <laughs> Ooh, look at that one out. You can really cool. cool. that's what's gonna happen. Yeah, I mean that's why Simon and I were saying it, it it's tough to sell in that area because it whipsaws right back in three minutes. You're you're like stuck. Like you can't get a trade. You literally have to close right at the end of that thirty minute. I don't like having to guess that good. Yeah. Hey, Jared. Morning. Morning. Um, I was kind of looking at the goal, the daily time frame. Yeah. How significant is yesterday's candle that closed bullish but closed below that um, mm -hmm. um, resistance at 115.08, I think? Um, yeah. So we talked about it a little bit earlier. It could be that these daily candles are creating some sort of consolidation. And so if this daily candle pulls down, it'll create, you know, like sort of three candles in a row in terms of consolidation. The only thing that I'm looking at is I want for a clean idea in terms of that, I want the daily candle on gold to break down past 1497. If it goes past 1497, then I know we could probably get to 1490 um, or uh, like 1492. That would be sort of my trade that I'd be looking at between 1496 and 1492. Uh, and that would then create three bear, three daily candles, almost like in a consolidation pattern where, you know, up, down, up, or down, up, down. Uh, and then that would probably coincide with the fact that there's going to be more discussions regarding the tariffs. Uh, if gold doesn't drop today, then I would wait to see tomorrow's daily candle and how that set up. If the daily candle starts bullish, I would tend to put orders below the close of the previous daily to catch a, a fill on that all the way down. If the candles start going bearish, I would tend to think that this daily candle here has created support or it was just sort of a, uh, a booby trap candle on the daily and the next daily candle would go bullish so today's sort of a pivot point because we don't really know why this daily candle is doing what it's doing um and it just it's it, the idea for me is i might i might not take a trade on gold today but what it's doing is it's allowing me to think for what's going to happen tomorrow and friday that's how I'm planning my day out. When I can't find a trade on the day that I'm looking or it's very hard to trade that day, I start leveraging the information I have currently and putting that towards what do I think is gonna happen the next day and start planning out that way. Cool, cool. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. No problem.
Looks like it's going to be a slow day. Yeah, I'm just about to go make coffee, actually. Because uh, it's going to be a patience game. What courses to study for a professional career in trading? Finance. That's the easiest one to study is finance. While we wait, guys, hit the like button. Oh, okay, thanks. What courses to study for a professional career in trading? The charts. The chart is your best friend, and the charts are your best courses. <laughs> Bro, that just answered that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was in the washroom. I will say it's the pocket. Man, so many people messaged me yesterday for thanking me for keeping the live stream open because they said Ted did a complete mentorship session yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, uh, I know someone's out there, they're fiending for trades. Let's go through our trades here. Your JPY, at a resistance, bullish momentum, one hour candle hasn't closed. There's no confirmation for sells or buys. GJ, in a shitty range. If people are still trying to take a trade here, let me make this more apparent. Goat shit. This area is goat shit. If you step in it and you get screwed, that's all, that's all on you. Don't get the thorns, man. Yeah, the thorns. <laughs> Here you go. You got the thorns. Go check. Gold. Gold dropped on the 30 minute now. Gold is ranging between, you know, this little area but, here. But if this 30 minute candle will close back in the range, that will be a clear fake out to the downside, right? Yeah. For gold. I wouldn't take that into account for a buying perspective, though. Well, no, no, no. I wouldn't buy. I would buy above. Oh, yeah. You know, or something. But I wouldn't buy. It was just saying that fake out would be i mean this range would be too small i mean you'll have you need to have more candles to create a range and then a breakout and then coming back in the range like this concept of fake outs and consolidation like you need a bunch of candles to range first okay it's like having a couple of bounces like if you look at GJ right now if GJ starts to range here then you can say okay we have a bunch of hits hit over here hit over here hit over here hit over here. now you can say GJ is ranging so if it breaks out and comes back inside then you can say this move up was a fake out right mm -hmm. but if it's doing something that gold is has done right now that it moved down came up and moved down again this is just like a gold made made a low created resistance came down to retest that low now if gold starts to range here let's say if gold starts to range here up down then you can say okay now we're ranging and if it starts to go up and comes down then you can say okay that will move up with a fake out because you have a bunch of ranging candles so essentially just yeah Thanks, Rush. Yeah. 
Can you give us thoughts on GU right now? I think it's going so up soon. Yes? Question mark. I'm not sure if that's a statement or a question, but I think worldwide videos, you need to um, look at the introduction video and post your analysis. Worldwide videos. Let's see if you really have worldwide videos. mean but if you really think about it they must have just hopped on because you just went over all <laughs> three of those charts so they had to have just hopped on and so that means they just hopped on and the first thing they did was hey look at this genius yeah an all-time high of 1900 gold ounce ted do you think it can break that let's do some <laughs> It's too far away. What's the point of even discussing that? I don't understand. What's the point of even going all the way to 1900, which was when? This right here, which was in 2011. There's no point in even discussing that, even thinking about that. I'm sure it's going to offend somebody and that's good because it's pointless. Yeah, heck of a swing. yeah, look at that. I mean, it's just so stupid to just even think about is gold going to break that? You know, just focus on the task at hand. The task at hand is right here. Where, this... where would you put your stop loss? Yeah. We... <laughs> <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> Maybe 1250. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, guys. Morning. Hey, good morning. Yeah. I think the person that asked that question is more of a swing trader than a scalper. Yeah, I think you should be a super swing trader for that. <laughs> yeah. That's a damn long way. Um, my bad. I make my own choices. I'm not a noob, but just wanted your thoughts. Worldwide videos. I don't look at GU, so that's why we have a text going up on the screen which says don't say look at this or look at that post a label chart so you know if you post a label chart that shows us what you think and maybe you know hey we might be able to point you in the right direction or maybe you could point us in the right direction so, who knows Can you look at your USD, please? No, read the text. Wow, man. <laughs> uh, Ted, uh, I don't know if you can see, maybe in your computer, um, there's gold bouncing off the 200 EMA in one hour. Yeah, I don't trust gold at all right now. Okay. This, this is the second time they pinned the 200 EMA in one hour. Yeah, I, I don't know what gold's doing. If it does go up, I'd look to take buys above 1503 um, and sells below 1497. That's what I'm watching right now. Unless I get a strong indication or a strong rejection candle, either way, there's no trade. Okay. You know, this is just bouncing around off one hour, four hour support right now. Like you said, those, those 200 EMAs are just lined up with that support. Ooh. Yeah. Like I see those for sure. But you just see like you look at the one hour now and you've got what one, two, three candles potentially if this one closes. You've got three candles that failed to close below like fifteen oh one. Yeah, it doesn't, say, it doesn't say sales to me. No, I know so. Uh but this one hour candle, I would like to see a close uh, above the 1503, or at least come back to 50, uh, 1503. Yeah, I think, listen, if we get up to like 1504, which is where I'm interested in buying to get above there, 
and we know we're going to get some momentum going to get up there. So, you know, best time to trade gold is when it's in momentum and then we get to 1504, we should get back to 1508. Okay. Don't play me. A lot of hits and butts and babies, but that's like, those are the levels I'm watching for. If that scenario plays out, then that's what I'm going to trade. <laughs> this is a Euro USD one minute chart, seems like. One month. Oh! I guess. Selling down. Yeah, the, the only thing I don't like is this monthly candle having no bottom wick. Which means there's no range for the month to go down. Plus, if you look on the weekly and daily, maybe this is a support zone but hey you have your risk marked up so looks good is your box right here on USD CAD. A drawing an arrow makes no sense at all. What if you sent this chart to someone who trades like us? You get roasted because you drew an arrow with no explanation, nothing. A, a trend line and an arrow. That's very nice analysis. Well done. Um, when would be the best time to enter gold cell? Ronit Patel. It's only people from India who ask these questions. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, is gold buy or sell? Sir, buy now. Sir, go sell now. Because they don't want to follow directions. It, it, it's, it's such a sad thing. Nobody follows directions. Like there's, I would say 40% of people on, on the live chat actually follow directions and 60% of them just sort of sit around and just wait for someone to take a trade so they can copy. This is actually quite entertaining. I mean, the, the few people that actually oh, yeah. follow directions, they actually know, they actually do well and then everybody else just sort of sits around. Especially when you see the, the viewer come out right now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Simon, you sent the wrong chart, man. <laughs> you need to watch the introduction video. <laughs> oh, what do you? What I do? Well, you, you swap the code. No, <laughs> no, no, no. You copied the link from your browser and then you opened it. And the only way I can open that link is if I'm signed in on your trading view, which oh, is so impossible. So what do I do? Oh, you. You, <laughs> you hit the camera button. <laughs> Just go and watch the video. Yeah, you need to watch the video, man. <laughs> so you're gonna have an idea you have to copy and paste the thing. <laughs> you can't just put that code in and see it. No, no man. No. Oh. Wait, I'll try it. Fucking level one move. My man, who is this guy? He's sending wrong charts, need to kick him. <laughs> if, uh... Okay. This one, this code, see right here, when it says X, and then this code, and you get that. I don't even know how to do that. Oh, the camera button. Click the camera on trade trading view, and then it's gonna give you the code. Oh yeah. There okay. we go. To make sure your settings are set to uh, share, though, because sometimes it doesn't. It won't let you do it if your settings are set to private. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, much better. Ooh. So this is the scenarios I'm looking for for gold, right? So yeah. if we get up to 15.04, then if we get into that range, then we should push 
you know, to the next range, 1508. We break 1508, 1509, and we should push into that one. So this is, I'm just sitting and watching right now. That's what, those are the areas I'm looking to take trades. Yeah, I agree with that. I also agree, like, if it breaks above 1503, like Ted said. Yeah. Would you look to place a buy stop at 1503.10 or? No, I'd want it to close above. Yeah, wait for a candle to close. I live in Australia and I CFD trade. I don't do anything crazy, but have no issues with it. What are your thoughts? Um, I don't know anything about CFD trading, so I have no thoughts on that. That's what we're doing, Raquel. Oh, really? This is CFD? Yeah. See how dumb I am? Contract for difference. That's exactly what we're doing. Yep. Okay, okay, okay. Perfect. We're just trading the price difference. Yeah. Yeah, see, I'm not that smart. I just... Yeah. I think I'm smart when it comes to candles, but... Other than that, I just don't know. What else do you need? <laughs> what do you think about gold retest right now for sells on lower time frames? I want an entry, just I don't want an entry, just candle analysis. Well, gold is ranging. That's your analysis right there. So how about that price action yesterday during Powell? That was a good swing. Yes. Why gold hasn't dropped to 1498 if it's clean candles looking left between that zone? Because it found support here yesterday and it found support here again because this was yesterday's support and it bounced. Can't get mad at gold that it didn't went to 1498 now, can we? Hey Raja, have you made up any videos on making support resistance, the gray lines? I think you need to go through my video list. One hour candle is about to close in four minutes. Mr. Yan. Your JPY sells below this support. Yep, I like this area because if you extend this now, it matches up with this area here to the left. This makes sense. It's nice. Oh. What's that? Triangle. Oh, yes. The first one was one position, the second one was three positions. Hedge Bitcoin sent a chart. Hedge Bitcoin, Euro USD. Oh my God, this is, I don't like this at all. I don't like this at all. Look at this. Look at all that spaghetti. Nice. Look at all this. Wow. Are those EMAs? I don't know what they are, but this is, this is, I just don't like this chart at chart all. At. That's so fun. Isn't yeah. that the volume at the bottom too? The red and the green. What is that? I think those those lines are the yeah. Um, Euro USD is always like this is so shit. You know Euro oh, USD price heck. action. This is like a Bollinger Band, but they're drunk. Yeah, I would not want to trade Euro USD at all. Yeah, I'm happy that I left. All the EMAs are the same color. <laughs> so so hedge Bitcoin. You said there's tons of consolidation but all the wicks showing resistance you know when you said there's tons of consolidation that's where your analysis should end but when you say but that's when you start to go into advanced analysis and then you start to mess up you know so if you say there's a lot of 
consolidation, you gotta stop right there and then you have to see, okay, where you want the consolidation to break. And what the fuck is this trend line? <laughs> yeah, we, we talked about that yesterday when we were trading gold for three hours yesterday, just what sitting around watching, is you have to understand that when price is consolidating, you're not trying to guess which way price is going to go. What your idea is, is once price leaves that consolidation area, that is when your opportunity arises. And, you ha and that's why you get paid to wait. But more importantly, the trade is a lot easier when it breaks out of consolidation than it, when it is when you're trying to take a trade inside a consolidation. And you have to get used to that fact of the market, let the market do the work. And, and like I said yesterday, you come in second place. You always want to be in second place in this race. The institutions will always finish first. You will always finish second. And if you can consistently finish second, you will be a winner all the time because you have already seen the path that they've created and you just follow that path. You don't have to be the first one out of the box to win the race. And that's the mistake that new traders make is they try and become the first one, right? You find consolidation and you're like, oh, I'm going to take a buy here because we're going to break out. You're trying to be in first place. I'd rather be in second place and let the breakout happen and then catch the move. Because if the move is meant to be, if the move is meant to be and there's, and it's a good move, one candle is not going to be the move. There's going to be several candles, which will give you several opportunities. So don't try and catch it and say, well, if I don't do it now, I'm going to miss the move. If you're going to miss the move just on one candle, it's not the move. Let's put it that way. And you can see on any charts, as an example right now, if you look right now on gold on the 30 minute, and we can clearly see, once again, we'll use our box indicators. Look, at, here was your move. Tell me how many candles you had in that move. So if we turned around and did this, and, and we did a box indicator, right? If we said we did this, so this would be your box indicator. As we were traveling through, you can start to see very, very straightforward that we had, give me a second here. We had one candle, we had two candles. You had movement. You could even start looking at this saying, if we break down below that, we're gonna be okay. But you can see that as we left the box, there was opportunities that were, we were leaving. We didn't have to worry about taking this, this candle trade here, right? We didn't have to worry about that. That was the first move, but there was a lot more opportunities at that point. So that's where you have to understand that just because you see <clears throat> one candle going down or something like that, there's always going to be more opportunities and you can see as an example here is a perfect setup we see the one move down and you're like oh i missed it right you didn't miss anything because it didn't break out of the box so you see how one candle doesn't really make the move the idea would be hey if we were to look closely and say this candle was going bearish then there would be more candles down over here that would continue to move like what happened over here. So that's the difference when you're trading to understand the fact that you don't have to rush the trade because the opportunity when it presents itself will be a very strong opportunity and you'll be able to get the trade that you need. Oh wow, it's making me move up there. Gregory was Gregory was right with the buy stop. He mentioned it. Yep. Did you take it? No. Oh. I didn't place the buy stop. Oh. Oh look, it's moving. Yeah, look up gold. Yeah, but this is good. This is what we want. We need to we need to wait though because this is fifteen oh four for me is the retest region still. This new one hour candle is open with no bottom wick and just gone straight there. So yeah. I'm still still not ready for a trade yet. Because um, it could it could reject here. 
Yes. Yeah, my first TPU would have been... Yeah. Uh, breakout above 30 minutes close, bullish entry range. Yeah, makes sense. You're waiting for a break. Which hasn't come yet. I was gonna mess everyone up. Is gold a buy now? Gold. Question mark. <laughs> yeah, gold. Buy everyone. Buy, 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 buy. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> no. If gold is a buy now, man, your stop is like 25, 26 pips. At least 15.01. People, people are so, 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 so angry. Oh. Like, this is exactly what I just said. This is exactly what I just said 10 seconds ago. If there's a move coming, even Simon said the same thing. If there's a move coming, we have from like here all the way up to here to catch trades but once again people are concerned with this this one candle it's like the the flickering of the candle or the or the move it, it excites people that they feel like they're missing something why not wait till we get into the into, into like if we if we start to move up you'll see that there'll be an opportunity you, you'll see that if there's if we're gonna move up there's gonna be an opportunity trust me you have a, a lot of area to move on the upside and all you have to do is wait but people don't want to wait they they want to jump in and they're going to take buys and this whole 15 minute candle or 30 minute candle is going to pull all the way back into this range here and you're going to be stuck and you're going to have a losing trade and then you're going to turn around and you're going to be like how come i blew my account again gold was going up and i took a i took a buy when the candle was going bullish but you didn't wait and that's fine. You want to rush? Go ahead and rush. The, this was the push for eight o'clock. Yep, that's all it was. There's no, there's no confirmation that we should be yeah. buying right now. Yeah. Like Simon said, this could retest in, in this level and pull all the way back down in the next five minutes. With gold, that would not cause me one bit. Nope, that's exactly. That's why it's like just sit back and wait. Now, however, the trade that you would have taken if you were watching gold and you believed that gold was going to break out of this box would have been over here, right? You would have taken that trade. If you believed that gold was in the box, you would have looked on the smaller time frames in this area here and you would have said, yes, I believe that we we're going up. Now looking at the trade, it's too late. We have to wait now. Yep. That's all. Well, if you look on the five minute and 15 minute, five minute just uh, created the support at 15, at 1501 and it got respected and yep. 15 minute, it closed back in the range and then it just tapped 1501 and it closed bullish. So that's the reason I said maybe a buy stop would be valid. You know? <laughs> Because I was watching five minutes and fifteen minutes, how they were forming. Yeah. It's just for me. I need more confirmation. I mean, this hour candle. Like as an example, we're looking at this thirty-minute candle. So this hour candle, however it finishes, that would be. If you look at this, this the way that it's finishing. I would want to see now another hour candle pull down, reject a bit, and then push up. And that's when I would take a buy. Okay. Would you would you see the previous one hour candle as a booby trap candle? Because it's most Well, what, what I'd look at is the previous hour candle as a support candle. Okay. And then this is now the breakout to go back to the upside. Because now what I can see in the hourly candles there's a high probability that we would go back to 1506 using the hourly candles. Because if you look across, there's a section of the chart, which is, oh, it's actually happening, yeah. which is right over here, I think, um, because I see consolidation. This, this area right over here that we saw yesterday, 
we're coming back into that area again, which would then lead me to believe that we would probably come to the top part of that range if gold stays bullish. Um, is this pre-recorded now? It's not. Um, when you guys find the buy entry, how much are you putting on the line and what return are you hoping? Um, well, that's irrelevant. It's what you're putting on the line and what you're hoping to return. It's your risk management. Um, I think worldwide videos, you need to go back and watch the YouTube channel here and watch all 60 videos before you come and ask questions about what we're doing. It's not, um, it's not what we, what we're doing. It's what you should be doing according to your plan. It's not, um, what you are, we're not here to give out, um, signals. We're here to educate and give you information so that you can apply it to your charts. Um, that's the reason why I give the information I give right now and how I'm trading and what I'm doing, but it's to give you the ideas to say, okay, what am I doing? Um, if gold is going up, shouldn't GJ be going down? No. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> no. It's like, man, this is where, see, people get confused with all these concepts and then they get mad and they say, we only learn the basics because you, when you start going into more advanced ideas, it confuses people. JPY is a safe haven for the US dollar. When, it, you, when gold is going up, USD JPY goes down because that's a safe haven. The pound JPY is not a safe haven for gold. The pound JPY is a safe haven for the pound. Like, that's very, very, very straightforward. How do I send a chart? Look below the YouTube video that you're watching right now, and there is a description on the screen. And you click on the link. 10 past 8 there, guys. Yes, it is. Do you believe gold will hit 15, 10 and drop back to 15 or 3 before it becomes a buy again? Sure, why not? I don't know what the relevance of that is. Like, you're going to go to 15, 10 and then we're going to drop $7 and then we're going to go back up. I don't understand. So what, what are you waiting for? Are you hoping that you don't miss the move? That it's going to go to 1510, you're going to sit there and cry that you didn't get in at 1504, 1505, and then when it goes back to 1503, you're going to get to take a buy and then be smart. That's not a way to trade. You have to understand and you have to execute according to your plan, according to your risk tolerance, and according to what your overall idea is. And what I've told people, and the simplest thing is gold on the daily right now is bearish. It's starting to push a bit, but the overall candle is bearish. So I don't like what gold is doing right now. That's the easiest way to look at things. When gold is trending, that's when you take trades. When gold is ranging, you don't take trades. And you can see on the daily, every daily candle has been different this week. And even right now, we don't have a trend. I, I would like someone to point out on this chart. So let's do this. Let's, let's do a little interactive questionnaire. Show me right now on this box, in this box, what the trend is with gold. I, I just, I, I want to know inside this box what the trend is. So, so what, what is, what is this trend? Okay. So for you to keep asking which direction we're going, is gold a buy or a sell? Do you understand why you lose so many of your trades? You know, like, do you, like, do you, do you understand why you lose so many of your trades? Because you're, you're not sitting and waiting to see where the market is taking us. You are trying to be the market. You are not smart enough to be the market. Just accept that it's, it's okay. It's okay to be stupid in this industry. That's, that's what you need to do. And you just have to be stupid, be stupid, accept it, be, accept the fact that, Hey, you know what, if this area here now sits and we create a support here and the next candle drops down and we create this 
little candle and this candle goes up like this, then yes, what you can do is you can turn around and say, I'm going to take buys when this candle sits here and it starts to form and we're going to go up and then I'm going to go to the top of this range. That's okay. You can do that. But right now, how do you have enough information just with one candle and it's on the 30 minute time frame? You know, so you, you have to sit and you have to turn around and say to yourself, what makes the most sense for me? How can I get the best opportunity? And how can I be the, the smartest out of myself? That's that's basically it. Like, I mean, it, it's not hard. Like, I, people overcomplicate trading because you're chasing money. I'm telling you right now, everybody just chases money. And it, it, it's just so sad. The, 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 the liquidity providers I talk to, the banks, I talk to Citibank, Barclays, Credit Suisse, JP Morgan, and um, I'm talking to one more bank. I believe it is Bank of America. Those are the five banks I talk to on a daily basis with their uh, liquidity provider representatives. And you know what? They laugh at you guys. They honestly do because they know that retail traders just suck. And they ask me every morning, they're like, why do you take so much time to work with these people when they have no financial background, they have so many disadvantages, they use terminals that are out of date, they have poor lag, half of them don't have a proper internet connection. And that's like, well, I just think it's fun. And they sit there and they're like, they give away so much money. And I said, yeah, I know. And, and it's just... Um, you know, you look, you look at things and it's just, that's the reason why. That was a full of truth as well. <laughs> World's Wide Videos doesn't like the truth. You were, talking, <laughs> you were talking too much and repeating too much. I didn't repeat anything, actually. So, gold, I want to pull back to like 15.04 now for buys. Mm -hmm. Because we've we've had a candle at least close strong in that range, so I'm hoping London, uh, New York Open pulls down a bit, and then we should continue back up. Um, this is like a very interesting question, Denisha Daniels. When you enter a trade, do you place a stop loss right away, or do you wait until your trade is in profit? <laughs> <laughs> That's um, when you're whenever you're entering a trade, you you're placing a stop loss, knowing that what if the trade goes wrong, the stop loss is going to be a point where you should be out of the trade, right? What if what if your trade keeps going in negative? Then what? You know, so a stop loss is very very important as an idea that okay, if it goes wrong, that's the point where you, your trade should be out. Like let's say gold is moving up now, and let's say the next. 30 minutes kind of starts to go up, so now you stop. So your stop might be somewhere down over here. That's going to be a stop loss. Because if price comes down towards your stop loss, you should be out of the trade. Because we don't know whether if price comes down and it keeps on dropping down. And if you have no stop, then you're going to be in a deep drawdown and big, big problems. You know, so... Yeah. So to avoid big problems, you need to use a stop loss. A stop loss is predetermined. Stop loss and take profit are determined before you click buy or sell. What most people do is they hit buy and sell and then they're like, okay, let's look for a stop loss and let's look for a take profit now. No. Your take profit and stop loss comes first. Your execution comes second. Yeah, I think that's a good quote. Stop loss and take profit comes first, and execution comes second. Oh, what's this? Pure mathematics. Ranging, buy stop, sell stop, target, target. Yep, this makes sense. Pure mathematics only uses Penny waters. It's pretty good. Penny water trader. Uh, 
the first thing you have to figure out when looking at a potential trade is where can yes exactly where can you stop loss and take profit be See, now if you're going to trade gold, what you can do is on the 15-minute candle, you could put a buy above the current low or above this current level here and say, hey, I expect us to push through. But the problem is you have this area here. But this should ultimately be your target. Um, reason being is because this is your supply area. Why? Why is this supply, Ted? because it's a single tap and then we have a rejection down. So what we're looking for over in this area, which is tough, is another single tap and rejection to the upside. And that would be your demand zone. So this would be demand at this point because you have a single tap and rejection. So there is a high probability that if we do go bullish, this will be your target because you can see multiple instances we've come to that area so it's something to keep in mind and understand what is happening if you're going to buy now what you have to realize is if you take a buy with this candle you could come down all the way to here and then it could wick and then push all the way up so it's not very smart what you may want to do is buy on the upside here on the basis that the next 30 minute candle will pull down and drive right through because trying to take a market order buy with gold will be very difficult because if it does push push down first you're going to be in a very very big drawdown but more than likely this area will get filled first followed by this area and then that will be Man, it's better not to fill this whole range without getting me in. Yeah, I was just thinking the same. <laughs> so, damn it. I considered it at the bottom, but then I'm, I'm just not keen on it at the minute. Things are about, <clears throat> about to take off. Yeah, yep. There it goes. Oh, no. There it goes. Doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, but this is good. Like, uh, As long as it doesn't go all the way, for me, we're now settled in that neck zone. So any kind of pullbacks and stuff, we should be able to get in some buys to mm -hmm. take yeah. it out. The idea, the, what, what I'm hoping for right now and what we will, will hope is that this creates a support here and we sort of bounce around here yeah. and then push right to that level there. That's the idea. So these candles are, are very good for what's going on. That's another two dollar jump in it. So, yeah. I mean, hey Ted, can I ask you something? Of course. Um, would you say that you kind of see the um, same kind of moves? Like, if you look left, right, we see that it's kind of gonna, um, it's kind of mirror the move over there. Yep. Uh, do you notice the um, same thing happening all the time? Yep. Perfect. Thank you. That's that's how I trade. I don't know how to trade in either way. I'm not smart enough to do all these uh, different ways that people do things. I just look and see what happened previously, and I say, hey, chances are. The... So look at, at this rate. This is a major support, right? We can agree that we've left this support area. So where should we have? Where should we return to? Chances are we're going to return to here. Maybe we get only to this point, but we're going to go. We're going to go up more than we're going to go down now. That's that's sort of how I see things. Because when you take a closer look at, at the market now, we went up, sort of ranged, went back up, came back down here, and now we're, we're heading up there. So once we break this area here, then that means we should continue to go that direction. That's sort of how I see things. And the only way you look at to get at these levels is basically look at the smaller time frames, and the smaller time frames tell that story too. Like we had the five minute, if you go into the five minute candle, you'll see something very interesting. What we talked about yesterday on the live stream, which is this, 
right? We have a whole bunch of orders here that have been taken. So where are those orders planning on going? First stop is up to this point here. And then as it starts to break up, you can then start to go onto the higher time frames and manage your trade accordingly. Because you can say, hey, gold will probably go to 1506.50. And at that point, there's going to be a decision. That's all. Um, I ask a simple question on your opinion on EJ, and if it's okay for me to even ask the question. Yeah, because Colin Walsh, you asked a genuine question, but you didn't follow the genuine rules. So that's why we genuinely ignored you. And that's why I generally ride off on my high horse. Okay, so Je Colin Walsh, if you turn around and you look, it says live New York session hosted 6.30 a.m. Eastern, ask questions, post charts, and get feedback. At no point in your question did you post a chart or ask for feedback. So that's why we genuinely ignored you. Yes, okay. because you generally ignored us. That's right. I hate when people do that. They think that we're ignoring them on purpose and it's no, you have to post a chart so that we will give you information. It pisses me off. We've been doing this now since what last year and people still can't follow directions. Come on. If you go, if you go to McDonald's, do you order a Whopper? No, you order a Big Mac. You know McDonald's. McDonald's serves Big Macs, not Whoppers. It's the same thing here. We do the same thing every day. We ask you one question. Just please, please, please post a chart. That's it. That's that's all. If you can't even follow the directions here, how the hell are you going to be a successful trader? That's that's my question. That's why I get angry. Is because people just don't understand. They they don't listen and they just want to do their own thing and be like, oh, well then, uh, people don't know. Yeah, there's new viewers. Good, new viewers. Read the first thing on the bottom. Read the first thing across the top. Read across the bottom. Like, it's just so easy just to read. Mm, don't want to listen. Look at this chart. Beautiful. Same thing we have. It's going bullish. This daily? Oh, yeah, it's going to Yeah, it's flipping bullish. This is what we were talking about yesterday at Asian 2. That it might come down, do a spike down at London, and then flip bullish. Yeah, we just we just need it to stop, yeah. do a little dance, and then <laughs> let us in. Yeah, for sure. Well, thanks to Ted, I caught like eight pips on this buy while he was talking. <laughs> he was like, "Well, you see this here? This will hold, and we will go up." I'm like, "Perfect." <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? You're making money, and we're calling it. That's bullshit. Wow. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just following following the commentary. I'm interested to watch how fifteen ten is gonna hold. That'll be the third time we're testing that area in like 15, the last yeah. Or fifteen oh nine, fifteen ten. Yeah, when it gets to 1509, it's going to be very difficult. <clears throat> I'm curious to see if it'll hold, though. Because we keep trying to test it. This is going to smash through, I think. Um, I'd be careful about the next 30 minute candle. That's the one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to exit once we finish off 830. Nice. Yeah, I, don't know. I just close my position because I don't like this area here and i know the next 30 minute candle is going to pull back yeah, especially last 15 minutes we have half hour so and gold was a very nice play we look on five minutes yep because the five minute like when we went back to the five minute it was the uh there was a candle that had a huge rejection down but finished bullish you had the booby trap candle in the middle and then it just took off yes no i'll say it yeah nice work oh my whatsapp is not working i'm trying to roast jeevan Shit. um richard r do you trade anything else beside metals forex my friend um yeah we trade everything if you post a chart so we can help you and analyze those charts but right now um we trade gold and um we just took a trade based on sort of the information that was presented at that point that's all uh, my risk per trade is almost like two to three percent 
worldwide videos. Who caught the GJ cell? Well, GJ is ranging. Goat shit. It's very risky. Oh, coach, you said 2 to 3%? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Depends on a lot of things, you know, like how I feel, how the chart looks. Yeah, yeah, and how sure you are of the trade. Because I've seen you drop 5 lots and 1 lot. Yeah. Depending on the trade. Yeah. 2 lots, 4 lots. And the day of the week. Yeah. And I have seen Rakil dropping 40 lots. Lots of love. That's like Ted when he just goes on hundreds. <laughs> Shit. 40, 40, 40, 40, 10. Yeah, yesterday I went a little big because um, I had made I had made good money the mor in the morning. So I risked I risked basically all of it um, during that uh, <laughs> Powell speech. Oh yeah, you caught the buys <laughs> and the sells. Yeah, yeah, because I had like I had like four or five hundred lots open at that point. And oh, I just, my Jesus. Yeah, and at one point I was in like a 70 or 80K drawdown, and I'm like, oh man, I'm going to lose the $100,000 trade that I did. And then it pulled all the way back, and I'm like, okay. If I was 80K in drawdown, I would commit suicide. <laughs> Goals, all I, man. Goals. All I was doing was just risking what I had made earlier in the morning. All right, so New York Open coming. Is it going to give us the full pack, or is it just going to shoot straight out? No, one hour assignment. Can you, <laughs> can you imagine Alex when we get there 100 or 50 lots one day bro one day hey Simon's gonna be watching the one hour by that time everything's gonna happen yeah sorry I'm got my times wrong <laughs> to be honest once you experience those drawdowns then it just comes like okay I mean the first yeah, but, uh, all I was doing that, I was just risking the profit that I made earlier in the morning. Yeah. Like, that's all I was doing. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, it's another thing to, like, risk all that if you your capital, you know? I mean, I, I, I do the exact same thing I tell you guys over here on the live stream. Like, it's, it's just, yeah, sometimes things are a little messy and you just have to, you know, trust what you're doing. Um, you know, I'm not going to risk more than what I had made. Um, but the, the idea was I had a really good trade overnight and I'm like, hey, I could probably double or triple this right now because the US just talked negatively about their own their own currency and gold was gonna fly. So I, I basically looked at that. Yeah, gold was fifteen psychological. There you go. Fifteen hundred was a psychological level. Yeah. There you go. Yes, I, I don't think we should be worried about numbers. People are too infatuated with dollar figures when it makes no sense. I just, I think people need to focus more on the fact that you know you have to make correct decisions. Like right now, we just bounced off a of fifteen oh six fifty, which is a hard support for me. So if this continues up now you know that you're going to enter a new range from 1506 to 1511 basically so you might find that over the next say hour or two we might get to 1510 this will be a pullback so now you're coming into the last half hour of the hour candle so you're going to get a pullback and then what you can do now is you can start hunting trades above 150750 Right, because now similar to what we did on the last fifteen on the last fifteen minute candle, right? Remember we talked about the fifteen minute candle here? Is you know, we had this we were taking buys above that level. What and what did we do? We filled this area over here. So now we know that more than likely this is gonna be our target, right? Because it, it, unless we stop at this point right here, but you can start to see now, hey, what what do we need to do? We need to break above this level right over here once you break above that level over there then you know where we're headed off to and what what we will get and how we will get that is this candle here needs to create a wick and once we create a wick those are orders being placed to then continue push to the upside that's the idea but the problem is when you look at this particular candle you have to understand something we're coming close to the end of the hour so the hour candle has been 
you know, this entire move over here, right? You, you can see like for the, for the most part, it's been this entire move. So when you think about the average push of an hourly candle and you go through your hourly charts, you'll see that we've probably met the average in terms of pips. That doesn't necessarily mean the move is going to stop. It means that you have to be very cautious if you're trying to take a buy right now and you may want to wait for a fresh hour candle to get the better opportunity in the next hour. So this is what I would consider a stale hour candle. So a stale hour candle means we're going to have a little bit of a pullback. The fresh hour candle gave you these moves, right? So if we understand this, so you had two moves in the fresh hour candle, and now we're getting the third move out of the hour candle, which we consider a stale move, because now we're starting to pull back to create the upper wick on this current candle, which is also at like sort of a resistance level. That doesn't mean resistance won't be broken. It means that you have an opportunity now with a fresh hour candle to say, hey, once we break above this level here, the next hour will be very fresh for us to move back to this level here, if indeed we're supposed to be going up. And that makes, um, makes much more sense in terms of how to execute a trade than it would be to say, hey, I'm going to take a trade on this 15 minute candle here and hope that, you know, we continue up when it's sort of ranging at this point. It doesn't have the same strength that we had with the previous 15 minute candle. The idea once again is once we break the previous 15 minute candle high, you know where your objective is. But more importantly, now you can start to say, hey, this is where I'm going to place my stop. So now when you look closer at the trade, you can tell yourself, okay, if I believe that we're going to continue up, my stop is going to be below the current wick of the 15 minute candle. So once my order gets activated here, I believe that we're going to head up to this level here, but now I can start to move my stop up a little bit as we start to move through the, through the, um, the, the opportunity at that point. So just keep that in mind and put all that together, but understand that the next hour candle can easily pull back down before it goes back up. So this is where you're at a sort of pivot point in the road that, hey, do we believe that this 15 minute candle is going to drive to 1510 or do we believe we're going to get it in the next set of candles over here? That's where you have to now understand your logic and understand your risk. Myself personally, I exited right over here because I know at 8.30 we always get this little pullback and it's happening right now. But what I would try and do is I would say, okay, towards 9 o'clock, maybe we're going to have a little bit of movement over to this upside and then continue here and this breaks through altogether, potentially, right? Something to keep in mind with gold. Um, you made my friend Colin Wash cry. Um, that's unfortunate. Um, uh, if he cries because I gave him instructions on how to do something, I hope his life gets better because lots of people will be telling him what to do. Um. And drink his tears, Ted. No, they're salty. <laughs> bumper has to be rewrapped it, it got it it's some, something cut it at the airport so i don't know so i gotta rip off the whole front 3m i was gonna say is that you had it done before didn't you yeah so i gotta put a new 3m on it it's uh, not on the porsche it's on the tesla um, so i gotta figure that out yeah so they want my car at 8 30 which is 8 37 right now but uh <laughs> it, the, the place is only around the corner so i'm not too concerned really yeah <laughs> Yeah. yeah. You don't want to miss, miss this move. Yeah. Uh, PPF. Um, yeah, I have PPF on it. It just means it, the the wrap, the, the clear wrap on the front bumper got cut. So I have to pull that off and redo it. How many? <laughs> so I got to go do that. Pain in the ass. 
Uh, Ted, can you tell how old it was when Curry when you started trading for a living? 36. Starting capital was a few thousand dollars because I was working full time. Wow, Ted, you were a worker before? I know. Oh, shit. I was a worker. Ooh, someone sent a chart. What now? CHFGPY, one cell over here is. This is a good target. I think a better target would be, I mean, now you're looking at levels to break, right? This level over here, and then ultimately this wick. It's the one hour chart too, yeah. It's this wick, this level and this wick. So at this point, if you're still in a trade, I'd put my stops at break even. I even trail my stop down to this area here. Because essentially now you want the candles to keep making lower highs and lower lows. So if you want this candle to go bearish the one hour, the next one should continue down to fill this wick. Gold had a nice clean move. See it now created a high when you look left it's all consolidation here. Yep. <coughs> Yeah, so either it's going to do like a retest to continue up to retest the high and go up or it's just going to shoot right back up. Yeah, I'm just watching the five minute now. These like five minute candles are just, um, <coughs> well, I'm hoping for a retest of 15.05, but I don't want to miss it. So like Ted said, I might put some orders above. I think it'll push pretty quick if it does. Yeah, because you can see the five minute candles now are just kind of creating a small little support. Yeah. Did you not get on any of that then? No, I've not got in gold yet, unfortunately. It just went without me. EJ is stopping. Is this stream every yeah, night? Constant pips. Uh, uh, you see, what I was asking you the other day on that. So, you know how you said you had UJ cells? Is that because you had your UJ chart marked up and the technicals in life? Or are you just doing it because you expect a bullish move? So uh, on, on gold, on gold. Like, do you uh -huh. expect a, a bullish move on gold? That's why you're selling UJ? Well, yeah, and UJ is at a you know big resistance right now, and then lower time frame showed you know structure turning bearish, so I took a sell. Okay, got it. As opposed to gold, uh, I don't want to sell anything when I see <laughs> that a daily candle is like it pretty much engulfed the previous bearish candle, right? So I don't see any bearish uh, like momentum for gold at all at the moment. Like I said, and we held that support. Um, at the 50 minute FTR, it's kind of like a booby trap candle. It was holding that support well and we didn't break down, so now it's just going to continue to rip back up. And now, if you look at the weekly, the weekly is going to turn to fill that area to the 50 20. So, like, 
Just keep your eyes open for all kinds of things. That's it. Uh, you said gold is making a lower high, but you said it will shoot up. I don't understand this. Well, Fortnite Hub, I think I did. I never said gold is making a lower high. I said it made a high. It made a high. So I would, the best scenario on gold I would want is to do a little retracement, create a support, and then continue going up. That's the best scenario I would want. stops above yeah I think the buy stops would be the best move you know because we're not there's no point of guessing which spot will be the best until it has that momentum to just shoot up Anyways, um, or anybody that wants to answer this. Okay, so yesterday I was trying to look for Powell's speech live, and I went to certain outlets, but I couldn't find it. I went to Bloomberg, and Bloomberg didn't have the live feed ready. They just said, oh, your thing is going to play for a while. So do, has anybody have an idea where I can find Not now, but like later in the future, if I want to look at the uh, live it, speech where I could find it. It depends, like, depends where he was talking. He might have just been talking at like a uh, university or a... Uh, a forum or something and obviously it, it may not unless it's like an official you know fed meeting or whatever it may not have been covered okay. Okay. So, you know, a lot of those fed power speeches that you'll see yeah they don't always say where they are but if you look on the federal reserve website i think you can see like an itinerary of where he's due to speak so yeah. like i said he, he may not be speaking anywhere important. He might just be making an appearance at a university or something like that. So, okay, it's why why not every one of his speeches is, yeah, live. Okay. Yeah. Someone said uh, this is the link someone sent in YouTube. Bsb.tv.cnbc. Yeah. So I've got some at like fifteen oh seven seven I think. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I was I was going to log on. Yeah, seven nine. Might be a little bit higher, I don't know. I think it's looking on the four hour, it should come back and cause a bit more of a width, the top width to be filled. So, yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. I really want 1505. I think you might get it, to be honest. If you look on the four hour, it's got to come back a ways and then uh, go a bit. It's quite a strong sort of resistance at the moment, if you look. Hmm. Once it breaks, it's flying. <clears throat> we got 
about 10 minutes for this hour. Man, you cat has been moving crazy during London. I, I can't explain this. UCAD is the messiest chart at the moment. Dude, it's just been moving like so many tips during London and it's not even a play at that session. It's crazy. Hmm. Yeah, it's weird. Cells could be a good, could be a good call right now. Um, so they shot. Yeah, what's going on, boys? Hey, what's up? Yeah, I had a uh, had gold buys earlier. Just closed for a profit. Had ten pips on two positions, so it's good. Nice. And, well, um, this, this latest move or this morning. Um, from 1505.50 to like 15.07. Oh, nice. Yeah. I'm hoping to get this next move that's coming. I think, do you, is, you, is anyone able to control the screen right now? Nah. Yeah, well, if everyone looks at a GJ, um, you'll see that, like, we've created 30 minute resistance, pushed up, tapped, and kind of ejected and closed bearish. Um, so this four hour flow is there, we're at 130, maybe, but I don't know, it's pushing, it's kind of ranging, it's ranging lower, it's not pushing, so we'll have to see. So looks like it's on a, on a support. No four hour support. Damn, you can just flew twenty, flew up twenty five pips in this thirty minute candle. Crazy. All right, dog, come on. Yes. Might get down to fifteen oh five. Look how clean that move is. Yeah. Goes back down. This is what we want. Gold made a high. Do a retracement and then. Yeah. Make... This is gonna be. Awesome. <laughs> man, I had thought. I just closed out my cells, man. I was in a fucking crazy ass drawdown. <laughs> Get it, bro. You sell it. No. What up, Kevin? You motherfuckers on this stream, man. It's like I almost closed my shit out. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin said, like, yo, stop talking about buys, motherfuckers. Stop giving my fucking buys. Um. Are taking that song or not? Yeah, I've taken one small entry here. Yeah. Damn. I I I want to manage my feeling. I let my loss grow because I hope it will come all right. And I take my profit soon because I don't want to lose it. Um I think you need to play stop losses and that's your stop loss is going to stop your loss from growing. That's the best advice I can give somebody. Use stops. Chart. One of our moderators sent a chart. 
Interesting. GJ. We rejected the top area, created a strong bearish candle. Once this hour closes, the new one creates the wick and flips. I'll take a sell. Perfect. This makes sense. Um, this was this will also be a start of the next four hour candle. So I still if this resistance is being respected, I think price is gonna like you know if this resistance is respected and 30 minute candle creeps keeps on making lower highs and lower lows it might break towards the downside but it has to break below 131 first UJ hourly bearish close has most potential to drop yep I agree with this so what's your uh, trade idea Yo, Simon, I took those entries too. Yeah, let's go. Come on. Oh, you guys took buys? Yep. Yeah. Oh, nice. I think the new one hour will come down, test that level again, and then hopefully the one hour should push. 100%. Okay, because Pete is selling UJs. Makes sense. We might get another push on the five minutes down before the new one hour candle. I think for UJ, I'd be not like I'd be hesitant, but I'd keep this wick in mind here at 296. How much is this range? Just a four pip range and then eight, nine pips down there. So I'd be wary of that area. But hey, if your stop is going to be above the 30 minute candle, that should make sense as long as this closes bearish. What advice do you give on using MetaTrader platform? Um, use it. I mean, that's a that's a that's a good advice, right? Use it. I may be wrong, but as per my analysis, gold respected the resistance zone, and now it's going to head to fifteen oh two. Perfect. See, everyone has different ideas. If you're looking for buys, I would wait for at least a bullish 15 minute candle. <clears throat> Even if, let's say, a candle prints something like this, this would make sense to me. I'd be like, okay, perfect. Now I can have my stop here and expect the next one to continue bullish and break this high right over here. Is gold retesting the 1504 zone now before heading up? Well, a retest, if you're gonna say gold is retesting, retesting means that gold has created support around 1504, 1505, then you can say, oh, look, we have retested that area because now support has formed. And when a support has formed, that supports your bullish idea. You know, whenever a resistance is formed, a resistance supports your bearish idea. It's very important. Like you look on GJ, GJ resistance has been formed. So it supports a bearish idea. You know, there are more chances for it to go bearish than to go bullish. Uh, you look at UJ, UJ also respecting this very, very strong four hour resistance. So it supports a bearish idea as long as this 30 minute candle closes bearish.
Watch gold on one minute time frame. No thanks. Raja, if this if gold closes on the hour below this resistance, would you say gold buys are invalid? Yes. Yeah, because if you look on the one hour, you'll see that this support was formed when yesterday during Asian session. The support was held. You know, so now you want the one hour candle to close above the support. So then you can say, okay, look, it re it respected this support yesterday. Now the candle has closed above it, respecting it in the arc session. So then the <laughs> bias for bias, it becomes higher. Same thing when you look on the 30 minutes. So, you know, the way it's closing, it's just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't like it. Big Mac and fries on gold four hour. Agreed. These are fries. Uh, gold drop. Just doing a retest. Just doing a pullback. Yeah, that's all I have to do. Is that what we know? Yeah. That's what we talked about, right? And there it goes. <laughs> Go on, gold. I hate it when candles open like that. Right? Yeah, as no, I say, no <laughs> bottom wick, no nothing. But it seems like eight, it seems like the nine o'clock candle does that a lot, and then mm -hmm. you'll have an opportunity at like nine fifteen to catch the rest of the move on the way up. I'm yeah, I'm in it from like. Well, I think the best entry is like fifteen oh four nine. Yeah, I think I think this you might find it. This this candle or the next candle will be the push all the way back up. That's why I said for people to wait on that fifty those fifteen minute candles. That that was that was what I told everybody to wait because you see how it pulled back. Look at it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I got buy stops up here as well. Yeah. Um, oh, Catch the whole range fill hopefully up to like fifteen oh nine. Yeah. It's, it's just like I said, if you have eyes above fifteen oh seven, um, you should be pretty safe because now we saw the pullback which we were expecting in the last half hour of the thirty minute candle on gold, and then it just pulled right back up. But that happens every time. Um, Literally, this happens every single time with gold. The last half hour, the last 45 minutes, there's always a huge pullback. But it's going to, it's going to be interesting because um, I think someone said it earlier, like this, we are at like four hour resistance here. So is this four hour candle going to be the one that finally pushes you know, through? Yeah. Pushes through it. Yeah. It's, it's just people get caught. And like if, you, if you're not experienced enough with gold, you, you would get caught trying to buy this candle and, and it's like that's where you have to watch because you, you would wait for the next hour and if you go to the hour charts this candle now filled this basically this wick um, yeah so you can see what happened is the pullback and this is where we say wicks get filled in momentum and you can see exactly what what happens it's momentum mm -hmm. right we have this bullish candle is not a rejection it's just a pullback to continue going further up because remember you're, you and, and actually this is probably a cleaner chart here's your here's your demand area and here's your supply area right so you can see now what's happening is we're bouncing from supply all the way back or sorry from demand all the way back into supply so all you have to do is just do this you can do demand and then you can turn around and say that this area here is supply and that that's where we, we're returning to the issue becomes and this is where the um, issue becomes with gold is at any given point in this area here, we can have rejection. So you, you have to be aware of that. And you have to understand that instance that once we get into that air into this area that I've, I've sort of highlighted, 
that we can have rejection at any given point there because we technically don't know as a retail trader how wide this actual zone is. Like we don't know that 100%. We can mark it up based on where we see rejections and we can draw boxes. But the thing is, at the end of the day, you have to understand that as soon as it taps into that region at any given point, it can reject. It's a sort of it's sort of the same idea here, right? When you look at this candle here, right? This one that was previous, the previous hour candle, and we look at this area right to the left, at any given point, once we come into that area, we can reject. So you always have to be cognizant of that and you have to be you have to understand that there's gonna be an opportunity for you to take a trade and for it to move up. Um and, and for you to understand that, yeah, we're gonna probably get to 15.10 because that's what's happening right now. But once we reach that area, you have to make an understanding and that you know it, you have to leave the trade or you have to accept the fate that it can pull back right down and then continue further up, but you're eventually gonna get stopped out. And that's just the tendencies of gold. Um, you have to get used to that with gold. You have to get used to the fact that maybe you're only gonna grab 20 or 30 pips unless we get a huge breakout like if this is the hour candle or this is the move that's going to be the total breakout for for the pair which is going to be very hard because as we come towards 1508 1509 there's a lot of traffic there so you just be very aware of that and um keep keep it keep in mind as you trade gold that at any given point where you see a rejection level and it, and it and you look left there's a very high probability that we reject that area hard. So it's always nice just to be like, okay, if I'm going to take a trade and I'm taking buys over here, maybe I get to this level just a little bit above, maybe just to this area, and then just say, hey, um, now I'm out. Because coming to this level here, this is your gambling at that point because you can see how hard it rejected those areas. And you can see all the other rejection points in this zone. So this is where you have to understand what makes the most sense for your trading plan and what makes the most sense for your risk. You don't want to get caught in a situation where you have poor risk management and, you know, people are saying their buy stops are being activated. I, I tend to, you know, I would, if, if I had buy stops at this point, I would have tend to remove them because of the way the 30 minute candle finished. So you have to understand that as well is, if the 30 minute candle had a pullback and there was a huge wick downside and there was a rejection, that means that there was a lot of liquidity. Now you can argue that the previous 30 minute candle was collecting a lot of orders. So that means we should drive up, but I always like to see a bit of rejection at the bottom of the candle and have a wick instead of what it's done right now. Because what it means to me is that we're going to bounce up like a, like a, a trampoline and then there's going to be a bit of a pullback and then there's going to be a little bit of uh, a dance in, in this area here. There's going to be a, a little bit of a dance now because we don't have rejections on the smaller time frames. Like if you go into the into the uh, 15 minute time frame, there's not really a rejection candle to push further up. That's that's sort of the problem at that point. Right. So you, you have to be careful when you set buy stops. The idea was on the 15 minute candle, you saw the, this candle here as an example. Um, this is what I'd be looking at is we had rejection over here. This candle rejected. I would want the same thing on this candle because then when this candle rejects and pushes, it has drive to go through, right? The, like if you look here, see, as an example, you have rejection there. The next candle rejects, but still drives up. It's tougher for candles to move in, in that upper region without rejection at the downside. That's basically what, what it comes down to at that point. But now what you have is this section over here, as it starts to push up, which it will continue, you're gonna now start to create sort of a support area. So what you might find is candles will start to form above here now afterwards. The next 15 minute candle may push further up, or you might get this 15 minute candle that just does all the work. So it's just, it's just a matter, but it doesn't mean that it's going to reject all the way down because the thing is when you think logically, all your orders for this candle were collected here. These are where all your orders were collected for this 15 minute candle. That's, uh, and that's the reason why it's doing what it's doing right now at this point.
I've got 25th, so I'm happy days. Yeah, I've closed. Yeah. I kind of, I do think we're going to fill this range, but... I think I think the hourly candle probably has till 1508.50 and then you might find that there's some issues or 1508.75 I think you got I got you got a little bit you have a little bit more legs but it's it's going to be a rocky road let's put it that way because you you can immediately see on the smaller time frames the reason why I say that is because you have all this right over here right so that's that's the first thing that you look to when you look to your immediate left you see all this stuff and you can see more than likely this top of this candle here will probably go to the top of this area over here that's sort of your initial first target unless it breaks through totally yeah i closed my uh buy stop not not going to try to over trade but then thing it's going to go up yeah yeah we should do Let's say in a candle there are bank orders, a lot of them. Why not the real move comes after two or three candles? Why not at the same time? We're, we're not smart enough to understand the reason why. Um, you're asking questions about <clears throat> bank trading, and we don't trade for a bank. We are trading for um, uh, retail traders. Oh, Muhammad Sayal, he's been here for a long time. Yeah, he likes to talk about fictional things. <laughs> it's just, I mean, when people start talking about institutional trading or bank trading or, you know, like all this stuff, um, it, it's just, I, I, I don't know why we talk about it because it's all hypotheticals and theoreticals. Um, that's, that's like, you know, when you, when you talk about, you can go on for discussions of days on how banks trade, what they're trying to do, but really we don't know because we don't, we're not sitting at their desk. Um, what did you mean when you wrote supply on the resistance? Um, what you need to do is you need to go learn supply and demand in the YouTube videos that are on this channel. Yeah, so you can see we're heading up and we got up to like 15 or 778. Yeah, you can see now we're starting to taper off a bit, but there should be one more little push just in the next couple of minutes. This this one this five minute candle should drive probably all the way to fifteen oh eight. Yeah, because that will be the end of the fifteen minute candle, and I think we're going to have you know potentially a rejection down a bit. And then what the the good thing is now is if you're looking at rejections, you can already start to see where we could probably reject to. Yeah, so this cool. is a good opportunity where the candle you get the candle that forms something like this afterwards, right? You're going to get a candle that'll do. Um, th this sort of thing and that's that's the candle that you want because now yeah. this this candle is going to range and then the previous candle is going to pull back into what we're creating over here which is sort of like a zone you can sort of see and you can see that it's, it matches up with this area and then we might have a push with that so that's what I'd sort of look at at that point supply and demand exist in Forex well just look at you just look at the charts. The, the charts tell you everything, right? If 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 what ha look look what happened here, right? So you have this candle here, and and these candles down over here, or this candle over here. You had a push up and then a rejection, and we went we left. So what happened in this? This is forex 101. We had a whole bunch of orders get pulled into this region. They rejected, and now they dropped to this region over here. We had a bunch of orders come in this region, and now we're going back up to put the orders back where they were. That's usually how trading works. Yeah, this five-minute candle will finish at 15.08, and then I think we, we might have a bit of a pullback. Out. Oh, man, should have kept my buy. Oh, man, I think this next five-minute candle could rip to 15.10. I'm going to be pissed if it does. <laughs> yeah, very optimistic. <laughs> yeah, no, I think um, the next 15 minute candle, that's, if you want to get into 1510, your next 15 minute candle will be have the opportunity because I think we'll come back down to around 1506 and then that will create the wick down on the 15 minute and then we'll continue up. 
or like you said, it might just get to me. That's not my name. Yeah, like that. What do we get? Like 27 pips that? Mm -hmm. That was a good move. Was. Yeah, that was a very good move. Like, I can see another five minute candle like that. Yeah, 22 and I, I think gold sells are appropriate now. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> good luck. Nice. Sell you, know, you know what's funny? Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, sir, please. Please, please. Please, please. Please, Alex. Please. So, what I was going to say is that I'd be looking at some of the chats and, like, people still are, like, surprised and, like, saying things like, man, what happened on those, like, when it's the new hour on gold? Like, Ted has explained it, like, a trillion times, and people are still, like, boom, bat, bamboozled by it. Like, it's just crazy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's because people don't pay attention. They don't pay attention to details, right? So people are just mentally retarded. Like they need to help. You know, check yourself into a mental institution and fucking stay there. <laughs> it's the, it's the right. same thing every day. Like there's this guy. Oh my god, what happened? Oh, uh, it's the beginning of the new hour, bro. That's what happened. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. So now the you got your new 15 minute candle. What I'd be looking for is, you know, there's a good possibility now that, you know, if, if you're if you're here, that, you know, you'd want to place your stop probably over here and let it range in this area here. And you might, you'll probably get up to 15, uh, 15, 9, 15, 10. The thing is, um, what you have to think of too is also now your timing. So this is, um, this is important now. So when you start to look at timing, you have to now start to think to yourself, okay, what is a major item that we're coming towards in the next 15 minutes? The major item that we're coming towards is the New York Stock Exchange open. So when you start to see um, these kind of moves here, you have to understand that that can all be reversed in the next 30 minute candle. So at 930 in the next 15 minutes this can all be taken away from you because the institutions will take a look and be like i don't want gold to be at this price i'm going to drive it back down to re-enter again so these are little instances where you need to understand the session and you have to understand what is happening in the session and why it's happening in the session um and and that's that's where people make mistakes is because they'll just think gold is going to continue to go up and they're not going to realize that there are certain instances where gold has pullbacks. Like we saw at 8.30, there was a pullback with gold, right? And I guarantee you, I was driving, I dropped my car off over at the wrap place. There was people saying, sell gold now. I guarantee you, I didn't even have to be on the stream to hear the, the, that people were, were saying sell gold because they saw a 15 minute candle reject. And it was not a sell at all. It was wait for the opportunity to buy more. And that's, that's how you have to look at some of these opportunities is this to me in this section here is never a sell. This is just an opportunity to say, Hey, I should probably buy more over here because look at these candles here. That's not enough rejection to say that, you know, we're dropping and all you have to do to understand that concept is look at your, your areas of when times, when candles actually have pulled away. Look how big the rejection is, but more importantly, look at the type of candle we have. It's bearish, right? This here is not a rejection candle, right? Because ideally what you would want to see is you would want to see this wick be higher so that you can see that essentially there were orders taken at the top part or the best price to drive price back down. And, and that's not what you're seeing with those candles. And that's the mistake people make. Hey, Ted, you know what? The funny thing is the exact same wick you just made actually happened at 9.30 yesterday in the morning and we saw price go drop down to 14.98. Yep. 
it makes total sense. But that's the kind of that's the kind of sort of descriptor you want to see that's happening in the market. That's that's the idea that you want to see through the market, and that will help you. Like right now, as it stands, this here, this is still not a sell. This might be rejection, but you might find that we may push up a little bit before we drop. But what I want to see is I actually want to see a candle that looks um like like this before we start selling it's just it's just simple ideas like you you want to put yourself in the best area to win and you want to have a candle that you know essentially looks like this as a rejection to go down not a set of candles that look like this which aren't going down anyway because the thing is you can then take cells, right? So people would take cells and say, Ted, see, I was right, it rejected. But if you traded that opportunity a hundred times, how many times would it just continue going bullish? That's the problem that you face, is people trade in a vacuum and they say, well, this time it worked. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for the majority of times that it worked. What's a good way of starting to trade? Well, Charmaine, you can definitely go Hello. through the channel. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, can you put yourself on mute? <laughs> How to trade Forex. This is what I did. My first month, April 2016, this is what I did. You went to PIP school. Yeah, I went to the PIP school. So I fell asleep last night, and that's what you messaged me after. What? The Yo, a lot of talk, a lot of people talk I crap about baby pips, but it's very informative. Let me know that some space is something important. Mute yourself, please. Your girlfriend called you in the night time. <laughs> <You're hurt. laughs> baby pips is really informative. No, I find it helpful when I started out for sure. Um, why people think there will be a crisis in 2020? I'll tell you why. It's the same reason when people take buys at resistance when resistance is not broken. Those, <laughs> you know, they think it's going to get broken. So now it's the same thing. They think there's going to be a recession, but it won't come until it comes. That's right. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly that. Man. <laughs> like you can say whatever you want, speculate whatever you want, but not happen, not happen. yeah. What, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, um, in the next, I, I'm, I'm going to, on baby pips, there was some shit talked about me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on Instagram live and I'm going to start giving away free money on my brokerage for everyone to post positive things about what we do every day. I'm going to be that marketer now. Oh, no. <laughs> <Sounds good. laughs> there's going to be 10,000 posts. I thought about that the other day because there's so much shit talking about what Raquel and I do every day. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to start giving away money on my brokerage for people to trade, and I guarantee you, you'll see all the comments reverse. <laughs> Man, we both are so bad. I want to see that. I definitely want to see that. Yeah. 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 Uncle Ted runs, runs a brokerage, and he takes everybody's money. And he he doesn't teach anything. It's like, oh yeah, watch Whoa. this. Ten thousand <laughs> comments, boom, boom. <laughs> boom, boom. But see, I, I it's just funny because um, it, it, like when I when I look at stuff like that, it's it, it's just so it, it's so cheap. If I did something like that, I, I laugh about it. But it's like when brokers turn around, they're like, you know, go leave positive reviews on Forex Peace Army. It's like I, I I you shouldn't have to sell things like that. People should be comfortable without reading reviews but if i wanted to skew my my results i would just do that i would just be like hey i'll give everybody a hundred dollar trading account if you go leave a positive comment and email us and and there would be like fifteen thousand positive comments and that advertising would cost me like what fifteen thousand dollars or you know ten thousand dollars or whatever it would be or uh, actually one hundred fifty thousand. but it would bring me like millions of dollars of business but it's not the right way to do things yeah. yeah, it just it it doesn't make sense with me. It's against my sort of morals. If people want to write shit about me, go ahead. Like I know what I do every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or or if you're wondering what we do every day, you can just show up at six thirty to see what we do every day. Yep. Click the like button. 
What doesn't make sense to me, Ted, is that if someone says that Ted's broker takes money, right? You're here telling people, hey, it's going to go up, take buys. They take buys. I mean, I just don't understand who's taking whose money. <laughs> we help you get better. Yeah, like, I can't keep, I can't keep paying everybody. Oh, wow, look at that, it's still moving. I'm in the business for over a year and I've seen a lot of stuff and tried a lot of things to be able to achieve consistency and nothing worked. How is this different? Well, it's not different, Marco. Um, the difference is it has to be in terms of what you're doing personally and applying the information you're learning here so that you can be consistent. Um, because when you look at what we do here every day, um, we've called trades all morning and now we're getting to 1508 like we said and we're probably going to get to 1510. Um, we talk about this every single day but what happens is people don't take the information and apply it. What they'll do is they will now start to trade and they'll say oh I'm going to take buys right now and it's like no the buys were finished. So like Raquel says a lot of times is how could I have how could I have taken this trade? Like, how could I have made a, a, a positive trade today? You would have had to show up an hour ago or a half an hour ago, right? So there's a lot of things where people are not taking their own responsibility and they're not looking at like, hey, how am I setting myself up for success? And your consistency comes from education 100%, but it also comes from the fact that right now is not a time to take an entry on gold. Like right now you should be exiting gold. Yeah. Why? Because we're coming close to the half hour close. We're starting the New York the the New York stock <laughs> the New York stock exchange is going to open. So there's a lot of things here. But you look at this chart and you say, oh look, we can continue to move up, right? And and this is what people are saying. Oh, I'm going to take buys and we're going to continue to go up. And it's like, well, you know, do you see this huge rejection area here? Like, does it make sense? And the question I ask people is, you know. Your tr like I said, your trade may work out once, but is this going to work out in the in, in the long run? And it's not. But then you you take this trade because you've missed the entry here, you've missed the entry here, you didn't know where to take profit, and now you're lost. And that's where you become inconsistent because you're just you're chasing a trade instead of applying the information to say, hey, there was support down here, and I should have taken a trade over here. I could have taken a trade over here. I could have waited for the new hour open here and I could have taken the trade all the way up here knowing that this was our target or this area here, so to speak, like we've talked about. But people don't do that and that's where you have inconsistency because now people will still ask me five minutes from now, is gold still a buy? Is gold a sell? And it's like, no, I don't look at anything else because Simon, uh, Chris, everybody Rakeel, we all said that this was our target area and basically, you know, for lack of better terms, it hit that target area, right? But this is where you should know we're coming close to the New York session open, the New York Stock Exchange. So there is the reason why, you know, you should be looking to say, hey, maybe I should get out of the trade right now because we're coming to the half hour close and we know there's going to be a bit of a pullback. Look at the four hour candle now. This candle closes in what, 35 minutes? Yeah. If this closes somewhere up here, man, the next one could go to the moon. I mean, you've got your four hour candles a bit different looking to mine, but yeah, look at it compared to all those others. Oh, what's this? Get your bike stops to about 15, 11. I was going to try and leave a runner, but then it started playing about a bit at that top spot where we said, so I'll just, just close it at um, 8.6, I think it was 8.4. But yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, above there now would be a good spot. We did well to call, um, get in something when we did on that pullback. That's the yeah, we called it, didn't we? Called that area, retested that area, nice. 
I didn't think it was going to make O5, but it, you got just I didn't get in at O5. And, um, <laughs> Um, someone asked me, do you guys also take short positions? And to that question, I have an answer. And that answer is a DM I just got. Uh, this is the answer to that question. So someone sent me a DM. Do you provide Forex signals? I sent the link. For gold now, do you think it will drop? <laughs> this is when it was going up. <laughs> And then they oh, said, do that. Yeah, and then they said, I had, I hit stop loss. <laughs> yeah. yeah, see, I think now, just the way this four hour candles form in, that it's gonna, it's gonna break through these tops. Because, what, because it's closed above, you mean? Well, it hasn't closed yet, but just the way it's forming now, the strength of this four hour candle is telling me that we still wanna. They still wants to push higher. Well, I'm just looking at them. I mean, that the last, what, the six, two of them, um, was it? The four of the last seven have all gone back down to 15, haven't they? Which is what I'm, I'm trying to keep watching that, really. But it's definitely got higher. It closes where it is now, it's pushed down. Yeah, we need a break. We need a breakout on the higher time frames. We're not getting it yet. Like 15, 15 uh, 8 to 1510, we haven't really broken in there yet. No. Yeah, that's why I'm thinking this four hour counter. We've got like 30 minutes to go. Let's see. I mean, the thing is, we've got, we've, it's, I think it's pretty obvious we're going to get an extra wick on the weekly, so we've just got to time it for the right, you know. We've got to just time it. So I don't think there's any. I don't know, I've not seen any candles form like that in the weekly for a little while. Daily candle now is almost flipping. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. When you look at the weekly now as well, it's not far off. Yeah. Which we knew yesterday was doing the same thing. Yeah, definitely. But it, it, the problem is, you, you get pulled. You get pulled like eight or nine dollars in, in, in like a couple hours, and it rips the other way. That's the problem. Yeah. Typical. If you're patient and you, you actually catch the move and actually the, the obvious move. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, do you take shorts if price action gives you the correct signal? Yeah. Why not? But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go against the overall bias of the direction. Area didn't break. Back down to the bottom for another bit. This doesn't make sense now that it's gonna come all the way back down. Well, could you see it coming back down fifteen oh five again? I, I think it'd be above that surely. Well, the idea is what you would want is you would want support being formed in this area here. You want support to be held here, and then that would allow us to then go further up at that point. But like, so sort of where, where we were at yesterday at this time, like, yeah. like trying to get here. Oh, I see, yeah. We, we need to hold that. If we can hold that support, then I think we have a good opportunity to break through. Because yeah. if this comes down to 15 out of five, this one hour candle in effect is going to be a, a huge rejection candle. Yes. But it's it it still it still ends up finishing bullish. That's 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 sort of the problem. But we did tap into a major zone at like like basically we tapped into fifteen oh nine, which was the major zone which we were talking about. Fifty, basically anywhere above fifteen oh eight fifty to fifteen eleven was a major zone on the hourly. So I I can see why it did pull back, and. If it stays bullish, then the next hour candle you might find it might be the the final rejection point, and it drops back down again. But it's hard it's hard to see it doing that with all the momentum it has on the uh, higher time frames. It's just mm -hmm. it just seems like we're getting stuck in consolidation on like the four hour and the hour. So you're essential. You, we essentially played the range game. I mean, yeah, as yeah. much as as much as we hate it, we just played the range game where we we went up five dollars and we dropped five dollars essentially. Man, look at look at this drop. Yeah. Yeah. Because
because you can see here, like we tapped into that zone, and then basically this is this is your range essentially. So if we come back down over here, I mean, unless we break that, then it buys again back up. I mean, even over here, as an example, if we don't break that level, it, like each of these each of these points, if we don't break it, it's a buy again. But ideally, what I'd be looking at is I would I would be taking buys until we, you know, sort of break through this part here. At least. It seems like we're going to. It just it's just very messy right now with gold because I, I once again we still don't have any confirmations with all the talks, with all the tariffs and everything like that. Nope. I don't know what we're going to do when this is all announced and confirmed. No. <laughs> it's going to change so much. <laughs> I wait 30 minutes for 40 pips and lose it all in one day. <coughs> yep, that's what gold will do to you. <laughs> so, I mean, we said close before the, before the half hour. I, I mean, I, I don't know how much clearer I can do it. Go watch the replay at 9.26. I said you should be closing now, but nobody listens. I think we even get a number. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's just the same thing happens every single day. Like, I mean, you just set yourself up for failure so many times. I, I tell people that. It's like, why do you test the most volatile pair? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like the gold is the most volatile pair you can trade. It gives you the most, and you want you want to challenge it. You want it. You're like, no, you're not going to pull back like like three dollars. You're not gonna you're not gonna pull back two dollars in one minute and gold's like, yeah, you wanna make a bet? Watch me. Yeah. <laughs> gold's like, watch this motherfucker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Just Oh yeah, and, and and it's frustrating because people always ask me, they're like, Well, why can't you get like uh hundred pips or eighty pips on gold? Well you're seeing why you can't. Because it pulls back six dollars in one minute. Like you, you can't do that to yourself because you're just going to take loss after loss after loss after loss trying to get that one win when it makes no sense. And then the thing is, then, then I think you will probably time it so you get on the momentum streaks. Where it's oh yeah. Mad and then you'll be like, oh, I've done it. But like you said, you well, that yeah, that's what I did yesterday. Yesterday I closed. I had a hundred. I had a hundred um, thirteen, a hundred thirty, thirty-eight pips. Yeah. Like no. I was able, I was able to do that, or one hundred thirteen pips or whatever. And it's just like. That is, you know, I got stopped out at that point, but it's the same idea here. It's like if you took trades, say, over here as an example, you took a trade over here, yes, this doesn't bother you because you know that it's going to be hard for it to break this level. But if you take trades over here, you got to understand that this is deadly. Like you can't, you can't hang around in that trade. You got to be able to exit knowing the fact that we came close enough to that area there that that's your cue to leave. You can see... Like I said previously, you can see all the signals to exit your trade. Oh my god, um, I thought it was probably like, Oh, you just below actually, so I'm Yeah. Like, but it's, even now, I couldn't even hold that from that point because I know for a fact it's probably going to. There's a chance of it getting back there. Yep. Got to close at the right spot. Hmm. Thanks for the heads up on closing gold, no problem. You, you know why I know that? Because there's been many times where I've tried to battle gold and and said, hey, I think I can hold this, and it's and it pulls all the way back and it kills you. I, I've been I've been down this road before. Like I, a lot of things that I talk about is I've I've battled this. Like I've been the guy. That's that's taken a trade over here with gold, and then not exited here because I thought we were gonna break this, and then now I'm stuck in this candle going, uh, what do I do? Do I close? Um, hopefully it pulls back up, and when it pulls back over here, I exit, and then it starts to fly again, and it's like, now I'm frustrated. When what I should have done is I should have exited here, and if I really wanted to trade gold again, wait till we break above here, and then take take another entry to go further up not battle in here with my profit that I had and I lost in a five minute candle. Like it makes no sense. What about getting in now? It yeah. became the wick. Yeah, basically. Um, and, it, and it's just, um, you know, it, it's just from a lot of trading in gold and understanding its movements and understanding at 930, 
this kind of shit happens all the time. Like you can go and back test, just back test the 9:30 candle and look at how it happens in the last half hour with the New York stock market open. It's very rare that the candle just goes like this. It's always a pullback, a little bit of rejection, goes back into this zone, it does this, it goes back down here and goes up there. Like it, it does stupidity and it's it's just not worth it. The the good thing about gold and this is the one thing that I've learned with gold is if you can be smart and what i mean by smart is if you know that the market is pushing gold in a direction to set up for either the north american currency open the london open uh the new york stock exchange open if you're smart um to know that that's that the, the candles are doing certain things to then reverse on those particular times you can play gold like a fiddle all the time like we did over here we knew that this was going to be a huge push up and we knew we were probably going to get to this area and if you can close right there then you have a perfect opportunity where now you can just let gold do whatever it wants in this section here and and knowing the timing that this is always going to happen like this for the majority of times you can snipe gold all day you can take this candle and be like see you later and now you don't care what happens where the average person who's trading gold doesn't realize and has not paid enough attention to realize that this happens at 9:30 and the reason why it happens is because at 9 o'clock we get this huge bull run or bear run depending on direction and just before 9:30 if you close you're going to have a good opportunity to get out with profit I think a lot of people uh, they look at the market as like a pinball machine goes up we have to buy coming down we have to sell it's going back up again we have to buy again I mean you just have to stick to one or two trades one or two moves that's it just one two small moves if the market is moving it's not telling you to take another trade that's very very important because like most people I know for a fact 100% their first trade most of the times it's a profitable trade first trade first trade of the day it's most of the time it's a profitable trade it's the third and the fourth trade is where they lose those profits coach i don't even get to the third and the fourth trade i do one and two and i'm out please. exactly you know because that's perfect like i've been sitting here for the last what three hours well i took one trade and after that i've just been just watching price move and hearing Ted talk and Simon talk and give my input and that's that's about it that's all what I've done and in the meanwhile I've seen almost you know more than five people trying to buy and sell gold at the same time yeah that's funny I like the chat yeah. <laughs> is it a buy is it a sell and then I know I know people are in drawdown right now I know people are trying to buy gold in a drawdown yeah I know guys who are trying to buy gold till it breaks 1510 yep why <laughs> Wait. It's it's funny because like, it goes back to the idea that they're worried that they're gonna miss an opportunity, and it and it's just like you're not gonna miss the opportunity. There's many opportunities, and I said this again. You have from 1506 to 1510, from 1510 to 1516. You have lots of opportunities for both. Like, don't worry. I'm out, guys. Have a good rest of your morning. Take care, mate. Yeah, mate. Good day, mate. All right, mate. Take it easy. Day, don't, mate. For, don't forget your crumpets. I'm gonna have some tea, man. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll catch up with you later.
Yo, I'm not a, I'm not like pro surgery. I'm not about like people changing how they look and stuff. But if they had a way for me to like get a British accent, like a surgery, I would do it. <laughs> oh, it's so easy. Just go and get some speech lessons. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I think Raquel can impersonate okay, right. the best British actor. Yeah, Raquel does a lot of impersonating. Really oh, he's like a chameleon. Oh, what you can do is just pull your lower lip to the left hand side and then talk. What? Yeah, pull, pull your lower lip to the left hand side and then just start talking, right? You're gonna start talking in British. <laughs> that sounds more Australian. Yeah, yeah. Well, Australians yeah, came from the UK, you know, like from Europe. Everyone thinks we're Australian because we say mate. Yes. Who says who says chat? Like chat. Like chat. Say, say, say. You bloody chat. That's, that's British. I, that's British. Bloody chat. Okay. But you know how they say chat in Australian? It, they always use the word country. Like, oh, what's up, cunt? How's your day going, cunt? It's like, I don't understand. Why do you use that word? And that's also British. That's Australian, mate. British use cunt too? Not as much as Australian. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, that's which... Like, it's pretty intense. It's like, uh, <laughs> so you're speaking to a nice old lady. It's like, oh, how you doing, cunt? How's your day going? It's like, wow. <laughs> All I like, right. I like blooming onions. All right, boys, I'm going to head off. I'm going to go to the gym right now. Coach. All right. See All you right. later, coach. Have a good day, mate. <laughs> good day, mate. Bye, mate. All right. Crikey. Crikey, mate. Crikey. <laughs> That's a big alligator. Crikey. Can you leave it on? No. Consumes power, mate. <laughs> my my electricity bill jumped up five dollars this month, so we gotta so we gotta watch the power now. Good day, mate. See, goat shit, GJ. It's goat shit. Someone's, someone's in drawdown. Look at goat shit. Big day, big day tomorrow, fellas. Big day tomorrow. FOMC. Wait, that's, wasn't this at 2 p.m. Today? today? No, that's, that's Wednesday. No, today bro. Is Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. Oh, shit. <laughs> Uh, there's uh, CPI numbers to build tomorrow for the dollar at 8.30. Uh, yes. Are you, are you jumping on the stream? Yes. CPI pending orders slippage city. <laughs> let's, no slippage this time. let's get slipped together, boys. <laughs> oh, you know what? Look at this. If FOMC is at 2 p.m., maybe that's why gold is ranging on the four hour. Look at those. Now, Candles. Now, it's, now all this consolidation ranges and stuff. God damn. You know, you know what it is. My uh, my FX book is not updating with the check, so I'm thinking it's Tuesday when I look at it. Oh yeah. Okay, make ticket. All right, Craig.